Hi, this is stream number 93. And oops, I forgot to do a few things like mute my phone. I should probably plug it in. And I need to silence Windows audio sounds. Oh, there already are. <laughs> okay, anyway. So today I'm going to be working on setting up the groundwork for live reconfiguration. I've tried to work on live reconfiguration already. I put in a, a few things, but I don't yet have all the prerequisites that I need to have set up for doing the actual reconfiguration feature. So I actually made a little note page under notes about what the sequence is. And that got kind of got me thinking what's missing that I'm going to have. So in general, here's a sequence of events. So on receiving a new configuration, the leader of my server cluster needs to apply a new configuration where it's a combination of the old and the new servers, which are provisionally brought into the cluster. And this is a special first step. That, when I say apply, it means it, it applies it to the log. That means it's going to switch to that configuration for itself and then replicate it to the rest of the cluster, but just to the old and not the new. So the reason for that is we need to get the uh, new servers to catch up in their logs, but we don't want them to vote. So they join the cluster as non-voting members. Once the majority of those ones actually catch up and match our log index, then we apply the joint configuration old plus new to the log. And that now all both the old servers and the new servers are voting and it could become leader at any point. And we need to have separate majorities from both old and new for any kind of consensus. So to commit anything to the log, you have to have a majority of both the old and the new sets. So once that is committed, then we switch to the new configuration solely. And the, the leader might not be in that set. So it doesn't, if so, it doesn't count itself towards a majority, but it'll still handle the replication until you get it committed and then it steps down from leadership. In the meantime, the orchestrators need to shut down the servers that are in, in old but not in new. While they're being shut down, they won't be receiving any more messages from the cluster, so they might time out and send vote requests. So to prevent disruption to the clusters, to, to the server cluster, we need to modify the code a little bit so that the servers ignore vote requests that arrive before minimum election timeout. So a lot of this is described in the raft consensus algorithms uh, white paper. And I added my bits in there for orchestrators because something has to go in there and start up new servers and shut down old ones. And so that's what my orchestrator server is for. So if you're wondering at this point, what the heck is this guy doing? So I'm working on a game. It's called Omni Arena. It's not yet playable yet. I'm trying to get it to that point, but it's a multiplayer online version of a game reminiscent of Ultima 5, which I really enjoyed playing as a, when I was a kid. But I'm going to be adding a whole bunch of things to it, hopefully. This is my, my wish. So we'll see how it goes. Because it's multiplayer, we need to have servers. I'm working a lot this month and last month and probably next month too on setting up the servers. Server architecture. So it looks like this very, very, very high level view where if you're a player of the game, you're going to be using your web browser, which will be running the game client. That'll be in the React framework with graphics probably in Pixie.js. It's going to connect to the servers through WebSockets. The servers also talk to each other through WebSockets. And you might wonder why are there different servers? Are they different worlds or different zones? No. Each one has a complete state of the game, and we have multiples in order to have re uh, fault tolerance. So if any one server crashes or needs to be updated, the rest of the servers continue to run and then the clients continue to play the game un uninterrupted. So in order for these servers to all have the same state of the game, they have to connect to each other, which they do through WebSockets again. And they're implementing a consensus algorithm called Raft which means that any changes to the state of the game is replicated to the, all the other servers, and they kind of go in step, uh, syn synchronized, more or less. And then I have another server called Orchestrator, which is one per server, 
or one per host. So if this is a four server set up on one host, you'd have one orchestrator. If each one was on a different host machine, you'd have four orchestrators. Its only job is to start and stop the servers as configurations change, which is pr probably, uh, uh, not probably, part of today's plan is that we need to modify the orchestrator a bit. So some of the changes I identified that I need to have before I can even try to do the reconfiguration stuff is we need to enable log entries to carry commands. Some commands are going to be RAS specific. For example, all the configuration commands. Other ones are going to be server specific. So everything else in the game, like player movement, NPC decisions, item drops, you name it, are going to be through server specific commands. So this kind of lends itself to using ab interface abstraction. So log entry will carry an interface on an object. I'm saying this wrong. Log entry will have a handle to another object called a command that will be abstract. And there'll be two, at least two implementations of it. One for raft and the one for non raft. Hey there, rally monkey. Hey, by the way, uh, you guys notice I have new loyalty badges. Looks like they were approved. So ho hopefully you like that. It's little gear icons. So one month subscribers get like a, like a bronze gear and a three month gets a, a silver gear and six month gets a golden gear. Woohoo. Also working on adding a uh, emote that playing with scissors uh, helped me out with. Yeah. Let me move that a little bit so you can see the gear unobstructed. Anyway, so log entry is going to have a handle to command, and we're going to have to work on some things that are required for the uh, command interface in general. It needs to be serialized because the journal needs to be able to save it, no matter if it's a command that it understands, like a server specific one, or one that doesn't, like Raft. So we're going to be working on that today. And then I realized I needed to change the orchestrator. Right now, the each server only talks to one orchestrator. That's a problem if a server is the leader and it needs to go start a server on another computer. So to solve this problem, what I thought of is that whenever the configuration is set on the leader, the leader will know how many hosts are involved with the uh, game, and it'll actually go and con and um, no, that was the that was the original. I was going to have it contact orchestrators, and then I remembered, oh, orchestrators contact servers, not the other way around. So once an admin makes sure that there's an orchestrator running on every host, every orchestrator will will connect to every Realm server, so that the one that is the leader will have a connection to every orchestrator and can tell it whenever the configuration changes. So there's a lot of connections, but most of them are going to be pretty passive. The only messages that go across between orchestrator and, and servers are generally going to be configuration changes and identification, so not, not too much traffic. It'll just tie up one port uh, out of you know, the 65,000 that we have. All right. So let's get started. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on the, adding the log stuff first. So that was the link for today. Don't need that. Oh, the other couple of things. I uh, I figured out how to get that fire code font working. So that was uh, Endless's idea. So that looks kind of cool. It does things like these custom ligatures. Uh, the greater than or equal to is nice too. Looks like that. I think I, I it's kind of kind of growing on me. I kind of like it. So, hey there, Mike. How's it going? It's it's the end of the year, Mike, not the beginning. Oh, you're saying hope hope you have a smashing new year. Yeah, you too. Should be very smashing. Or I was trying to think of a thrusty ship joke there, but I can't. I'm coming up dry. Hopefully, I don't I don't get crushed by any doors. Oof. Anyway, so I got the code, the, was it Fira code? Fire code. Fira code. Fira code. Font working, which is kind of nice. And then, oh yeah, I got the, um, all the test framework plugins working. So it's pretty cool. Now I can run the tests 
by hitting that button, and I got it to run uh, all all of them in parallel. So only the um, the wrapped test is actually the longest test sweep, so it, it takes the longest to run. But it's kind of cool. I can see um, green or red for each test, and I can individually replay a test. You don't see the messages unless it fails, or if you click on an individual test, you see how long it ran. So I kind of I'm missing the summary a little bit, but otherwise it's pretty cool. Also, what did I do? Oh yeah, I updated the extensions command to to mention it as well, and I had to make a page for that because there were a lot of a lot of links, and this wouldn't fit in one command in Stream Elements. So now there's a page for it, and I added a git command. That came up last time, I think, like, what do I do for Git? I think the question was really, where do I put it on GitHub? But just in case people want to know what Git stuff I use anyway. So, yeah. Is that greater than equal to change just visual? Yeah, it's called a ligature. So if I, you can see the cursors right now between the two. If I hit space, it separates them. So it, I think it takes a little bit getting used to that it's no longer one character, but two. But I kind of like how it looks. Yeah, all right, so log entry right here. I'm gonna change this. So it's not gonna be that this is a base class. It's gonna be that it has a handle to a base class. So let me duplicate. Well, hold on. Let me think about this. I guess I want to do test first, right? So a test that could drive this is I want. Let's let's say I wanted to have a test where I wanted to encode a configuration change log entry. I suppose we need a test suite for that, right? Let's make a new test suite called log entry tests. And that's log entry. Okay, this one's a public include, so raft slash that. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Okay, probably we'll use JSON, right? So we'll keep that. All right, so serialize, right, let's have serialize um, configuration command. Actually, there's gonna be a couple types of configuration commands, right? There's gonna be single configurations, for lack of a better word. There's gonna be joint configurations, and then there's gonna be provi provisional joint configurations. Hey there, Romani, I hate. Doing okay? How are you doing? Are you excited that Adam's coming back tomorrow? I kind of am. I kind of miss watching Adam uh, while I'm eating breakfast. All right, so... Yeah, let's have the three kinds, right? So serialize single configuration command. Let's clear this out. Oh, hold on. Do I, am I going to make use of this? Actually, I am going to make use of this. So let's let's just keep that. Clear this out. I'll just make placeholder for the two. Just finish your dinner. You got you European guys, or other other part of the world. For me, it's just after breakfast. <laughs> Actually, uh, Adam said he's going to be f spending all the day on DevOps. I think. I actually read that part. I'm like, oh, oh well. At least we get to see Adam again. <laughs> Serialize. So I want joint. I want um provisional configuration, and then I want joint configuration. And not that kind of joint. We're talking about the joining of two sets of configurations, old and new. All right. So raft log message log entry. Okay, so I think for this we're going to have to invent a new object. So it's going to be
I guess we'll put it in log entry or should it be in another file? What I was thinking is you'd have something like entry command and then you'd have to, well, you would make, you'd have a command and the command would be something like this standard make shared raft configuration command. Actually, we could have, uh, we could break it, break it, break it up in all three kinds, right? Single configuration command. Hey there, Adam. Explain what? <laughs> Hold on, pro streamer here. I'm a little short, a little, a little slow on my. Uh, especially he's done with DevOps. Adam is a funny guy, but you're not done with DevOps. I was explaining to him. And uh, funny in a good way, right? <laughs> how are you? How are you doing, Adam? How was your vacation? You've you've been on vacation, so you deserve to get a little bit of an update. So, when did you go on vacation? Like around here. So I, I tried to introduce live server reconfiguration in my game, and then I realized quickly that I'm missing a lot of things that I needed. And, and also I needed to refactor. There's a bunch of crud. So I did a bunch of refactoring, and then, all right, this is where I, I realized I needed to add stuff. When I started adding persistence, so I established the, the journal which holds the log, and then I'm like, oh, well, we're missing a bunch of other stuff. So I've spent a bunch of streams adding logs to Raft. So up until then, the Raft implementation I had was only electing leaders. So then I spent three streams, it looks like, adding the log stuff to Raft. And that turned out to be a lot of stuff, a lot more than I thought it was. But it's pretty much done. And now, now I'm getting rid of the, or get, not getting rid, handling the other prerequisites. So now that we have log entries, I need to make have allow them to carry state commands and the raft specific state commands are changing configuration so once i have that then i can do reconfiguration yay and then i also needed to change um, the orchestrator server for me orchestrator is just a little guy that starts and stops the game servers and um, there's an architecture change i need to have um, each one connect to every host not just the um, I mean, every server, not just the servers on its own host, but every everyone, because we don't know which server is going to be the leader. You've got a ton of work to do. You're just not going to stream it. I kind of feel the same way. There's there's some work that just doesn't fit on streaming that you have to get through, right? So it's like a like a mixture of stream and non-stream stuff. So yeah, we're uh, working on adding the command to the log entry today. So the log entry, where'd it go? It was a pretty lonely structure. It just has the term number from raft. So we're going to basically add a handle to a command object. And there's going to be at least, I started out saying there's going to be at least two kinds, but I'm gravitating towards the, the, uh, 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 an implementation for a command. An implementation for each kind of raft specific state command and i might do the same thing for server too so there's three that i thought of single configuration command joint and then joint provisional and that has to do with this so in the white paper they talk about c old c new and then c old new and then i added a third one which is sort of my interpretation of when they say you need a pre a an additional step before where you have non-voting members to me that's that's that screams of being a the third kind of configuration so like c new would be a single configuration c old new is a joint configuration and then this one where new is provisional non-voting i'm calling it c old pro prov provisional new so the three kinds single provisional i guess i call it provisional and then the old new is joint so i'm going to make one and put it in and I guess we need to put in stuff in the command, right? So the command's got to have whatever we want in a, conf in a configuration. Um, I need to look and see. What did we put in configuration? Oh, that's another thing I did off stream. 
I had one structure for configuration and I broke it up into three because to me there are three different concerns. There's the state of the cluster, and this is exactly what I want to put into this, by the way. We'll get that in a bit minute. That's the cluster's configuration, which is just the IDs of all the servers. Then there's the server configuration where it's what is our instance ID and then what are some constants, the timeout values. So this generally doesn't change for a server lifetime. This will change if you add or remove servers. And then the third part is the persistent state. And I broke that out into its own class and put variables here because it needs to be implemented outside and, and it's a dependency that we inject in is Raft will, will want something that can load and save these variables to persistent storage. I didn't want the Raft implementation to actually implement file reading and writing because I wanted it to be generic. So, so yeah, instance IDs. If that's a set of integers, I think I can just get away with this. 42, 85, 1, 3, 5, 3, 1. Those are some of my favorite numbers. That's the answer. That's from 85 filter and, and that's some, some random streamer I know. Okay, so we remove all this. So what do I want that to be serialized to? Yeah, just numbers. I guess I could throw in, I could throw in another number to emphasize that, that, that they're not necessarily sorted in any kind of order. So what do I want it to be serialized as? I think I want the, this is a log entry. So I guess type will be the type of command. I'm going to hate myself later for making these long streams, strings, but we'll see. So, oh, I need to set a term. Term equals, I don't know, we need another number. Nine. Why not? Oh yeah, Mike is ready, to, almost ready to release his game. So if you guys don't know Mike, shout out to him. He's finishing off the last few levels of his game. So good luck with that, Mike. I, I watch him and I just admire his tenacity. That he, he'll play test a single level for like two, three hours until everyone has been driven away but him and his loyal followers. And I wish I was like Mike and, and how diligent he is. Hey there, Admiral. Why do you use struct instead of using class? Uh, well, it, really, they're the same as far as speed. The only difference between a struct and a, and a class is that a struct, by default, everything is public. If I made it a class, I'd have to say that's public. That's equivalent in C++. So I usually make it a struct if it's a plain old data structure or if it's supposed to be open. So it's maybe struct uh, public properties of, of some kind with maybe some helper functions. Yep. Does the size of JSON strings not hopefully? I don't know. This might make it less performant. I have the ability to just remove JSON at some point and make it binary. That's, that's my provisional plan, I guess, is to go with JSON for ease of debugging until it, it becomes a performance problem. And then I will um, probably remove the JSON and make it, um, you know, some kind of binary encoding. I don't know yet if it is affecting the performance because I don't have enough of the server running yet. Okay, so I guess we just encode the rest of the fields. Actually, let's let's encode it this way. So we'll say command and then say that that's in its own JSON object. Right, so I'm just I'm just cannibalizing these entries here. So it's instance IDs, and that will be how we encode a set. I guess it's just an array, right? Be the most convenient type. So that would be these numbers. Actually, I can just put that in there, right? Actually, the I guess the order does matter. So let's assume that we will be putting them in order just cause, because that's the most convenient because C++ is set if you iterate through it, it sorts it. So 
All right, so that that's one. Let's go with that for now. So I need to have this and that. I suppose it makes sense to have a different class for each one of those, which means a different set of unit tests. Am I okay with that? Actually, they're small enough. Why don't we just leave them? We'll leave them here. So it'll be in here that we defined it as struct. Single configuration command. And it's going to inherit from command, which means I have to have a command. And this one's got to have instance IDs just like the server cluster configuration. In fact, I'm going to copy it basically from there. Actually, why don't I take from that I server? Oh, no, I server includes log entry. Okay, uh, yeah. I don't want to duplicate it there. I guess I should promote it out. Yeah, let's promote it out. So copy paste, call that cluster configuration. Cluster configuration. Defi defines that structure. Okay, so it's just that structure. Sorry for the noob question. What exactly is DevOps? DevOps is all the work that's sort of in the back end, I guess, usually. And maybe Adam will have a nice description of it. There you go. My interpretation is that it's all the stuff you have to do behind, behind the scenes to get stuff deployed and operational. So setting up all the infrastructure to uh, build, release, and deploy something onto production. Hope I got that right. Do I have a DevOps command? I do have a DevOps plan. <laughs> Thank you, Ken Kematics. My DevOps plan is to have them as self-managed as possible, yes. So I'm gonna have some scripts to do everything. And it's trying gonna be try it's gonna be an attempt to make it cloud implementation neutral. So I can put it on AWS or Google or whatever kind of cloud. Do I use precompiled headers? No. PCH precompiled headers. I haven't needed to use it because my modules are generally small enough that and I have enough uh, CPU cores that I can build it within 30 seconds, even if it's all built from scratch. So it's if uh, compiling were to become a, a long amount of time that I would probably switch to pre-compiled editors. Okay, so this just has that. And so we can pull it out here from here and include it. Cluster. Okay, IntelliSense is not going to be able to help me, is it? Yeah, you keep loading. You keep trying. Probably because I haven't mentioned it here. Hold on. Uh, yes, it does need to go there. Okay, so log entry can then pull from that as well. And then we can say this contains one cluster configuration. Okay, I need to include something else, right? Right, log entry test. I didn't make an, a note for that. Of course, log entry tests. Probably should just rerun CMake so that it gets unconfused. All right. 
Maybe I need to reload. <laughs> oh no, IntelliSense is almost working. Oh, that's right. I changed the hover delay because it was really annoying me that it would pop up so quickly. I changed it from 300 milliseconds to a second. All right, so what does con command need? I don't know yet. But definitely need to have one here, and it will be, I guess, a unique pointer to one. This represents the change to be made to the server state. When this log entry is applied. All right. Okay, that probably means I need to, instead of doing make shared, I need to... I don't have make unique because I'm not on C++14 yet, but I can do a unique pointer. As long as I do a, a new... All right, and then that's going to be arrow, and then we have to say move at this point. Oh, right. It's configuration dot. Come, it doesn't like this. Oh, there was a, uh, a way to, to cast it, right? Um, I forget. So I'm going to have to look it up. Look it up, sir. C++ cast unique pointer. Here we go. Exactly what I need to know. What's the answer? Really? I don't like that. Static cast release. Thought there was a better way to do it. Ugh, I don't like C++.com. Maybe it was maybe it's dynamic pointer cast. Come on, manual start. There we go. Unique pointer cast? No, dynamic pointer cast? Static pointer cast, I think that's it. Only with shared pointer, huh? Hmm. Something tells me that I will need to do the ghetto approach of, uh, this <laughs> release it okay I can I don't have to have that static cast I can just okay I think I know what to do so they want me to reset it I guess Oh, because it's const? There we go. All right. Actually, I wonder if that was the problem all along. Let me try it the way I had it before. Oh, okay. That the, the, All along, it was just that I needed to do a, take away the const. I was being silly. Okay, it's entry dot so which means we need to have a serialized command. Actually, do I have a serialized command already? What types of casts are there in C++ excluding constants and stuff? There's static casts. Well, T2. There's T, I guess. There's dynamic cast and const cast, right? I don't. I don't like to use them though. Because they're kind of, I sort of see them as warts in that um, if you had to explicitly cast things around, 
then it means you weren't using the right type in, in the first place. I like to have it so that the compiler can fi just figure out what I, what I mean by implicit casting. So I know people disagree with me on that, but it is what it is. I don't like to use these. Other people do. It's a matter of style, I think. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. And there's all, some, you'll, sometimes you'll see me use the traditional cast, which is from C, which is just, hey, compiler, figure it out. Static cast will... It, let's see if I, if I get this right. Oh, there's also a reinterpret cast. Static cast assumes that you know what you're doing and that the two, that the object really does implement that type. Dynamic cast will do a runtime check to make sure it does, and I think it either throws an exception or returns null if it did, if it didn't. Reinterpret cast just says, you know, forcibly take the pointer and just assume it it meant you meant to say that it was pointing to a T and not to whatever. And then const cast, I believe, is to remove or yeah to remove the constantness. So this is generally frowned upon. That It's like you're breaking open a read-only thing and making it read-write. This is, dynamic cast is used if you're not sure if the object it does is derived from T, but you want to check. Static cast is if you, you know it is derived from T and you want it to be more performant. And reinterpret cast is if you're just dumb <laughs> and you have the wrong type. Um, T is a little bit of a magic thing in that in C++, the compiler kind of tries to figure out what you meant. So it could mean const cast, it could mean static cast, or it could mean reinterpret cast based on based off of the relationship between that type and then the the um, starting type. So like if you had S, S, and then you did that. So if S and T are not related to each other, that's a reinterpret cast. If S and T are related through inheritance, it's a static cast. If this was like that, then that's a const cast. So it's, it's sort of magical in that it depends on the context. And I think that's why people, and some people, a lot of people probably prefer these because these are not magical. They are very explicit. They're, they're saying exactly what you intended to do. I like to type everything as void and cast whenever. Yeah, I have a good friend of mine who hates that, Steve. But, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right, so this doesn't work yet because I don't have a serialized function, right? Right, log entry is no me serialized method, so I think we need that. So let's, let's divide these into properties and methods. String serialize. The C++ preserve type information with pointer after compilation? Mm, depends. So if you use the dynamic cast, then yes, because that uses our runtime type information, RTTI. So runtime type information is something you can turn on, and what it, do, what it does is adds a little bit of space to every object so the object knows what type it is. So then if you turn RTTI on, I think it's usually on by default, then types do preserve their type information and it's used for dynamic cast and other things like that. But you could not use dynamic cast and you could turn RTTI off and then in that case, you don't preserve the type information. So it, it kind of depends. All right. At some point I need to document all this, but let me, let me get it to work first. That's going to need to serialize and actually that means we need to implement that somewhere. Yeah, let's implement it here. Log entry dot cpp. Let's let's say it contains the implementation of the log entry structure methods. That sounds better. And this is in raft because it's a public file. And I don't know about that yet. Okay, I guess it is going to be, kind of be like message. I 
Actually, how are we going to deserialize? That's a good question because how how do we know what derived class? Actually, I think that means we need to add something here, and then we need to have factories for creating messages of sort of, sort of creating recreating commands of certain types. That's what it is. All right, let me think about this. Yeah, so this type we have to be able to get from. Yeah, okay. I'm talk sorry, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Let's just get it minimally operational. So we don't need this yet. We do need this and it's log entry. Yes. So Oh, because I have const. Let's make it const. I guess, yeah, I, did, I guess I didn't, did need the JSON stuff after all. Each command type should have its own serialized and deserialized. Yes, it will. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Because when we serialize, we have to actually ask the object what its type is. So const auto type equals command Uh, get type, I guess. And then const auto, well, yeah. Serial, serialized command. It's actually, it's arguably a better structure than, than what I did for, for these uh, messages. This is copy pasted from messages. So we're going to remove it in a second. Actually, I guess I could store this directly in, right? So JSON type, and then JSON. And what did I decide to do in the unit test? I told, called it command. Actually, and it's supposed to be a JSON encode. And term, we need term as well. Term. Return that to encoding. There we go. So we need a type and we need an encode. So. Well, these are all going to be methods, so. String. What else do I need? Unique pointers. That's memory. So string type uh, get type. That's virtual. Yeah, I might as well take const zero, and then the other one is uh, JSON, right? encode and that gives me back a json value so that this means this means this has to overwrite it so properties command override do, do, do. Hold on, I need to be careful about this. Yeah, here I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this to shared pointer. Because yeah. Either that or I need to have a, a virtual destructor. I guess I can. It's just if I do that, I can't, I don't remember. I don't remember this. Do you, can you have a pure virtual destructor? I think you can.
It's just this has to be virtual now as well. Yeah, the price of having an explicit destructor is I need to, following my own rules, I need to then say what are the move and copy semantics. So, copy, let's just delete them all. So copy constructor, remove constructor, we're saying we don't allow them to be copied or moved because it's going to be handled through a unique pointer. And then copy and move assignment also deleted. But then we're going to have a destructor and then type and encoding. Do, 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 do. The alternative to do, doing all this stuff and with this right here is if I made this a shared pointer, then the deleter that's created when you create it um, will destroy the, the drive class and uh, you don't need to um, support the um, destructor in the base class. If I, I could even, in fact, I could even... Um, Make that um, deleted, I think. I think I need to do the same thing, don't I? Makes it kind of ugly, but it's okay. So delete all the all the things. It's better than using enum and a switch. It's a lot of work to get started, so it's not worth. So it's it's not better than using an enum and a switch at this point. But I'm looking ahead in the future where every kind of command in the game will have its own uh, could have its own encoding. If I wanted to support like high, a good for performance, um, because every command might be a different size, right? So, for example, this command has this structure in it, which has a set. If I didn't use uh, polymorphism, then every command would have to have this set, even if it doesn't use it, right? Or I could do a different kind of poly polymorphism that doesn't use inheritance, I guess. Um, if there's a way to do that with an enum and switch, I don't know. Can't think of it right now. So I guess I'm just gravitating towards this because I'm used to it doing used to doing it this way. I could be wrong though. But never assume I'm right. Assume I'm possibly right. Okay, implement. We actually don't need to do anything. We can default it here. And this guy and this guy. It's a bit of boilerplate, but it, it shouldn't be too bad. So this one will return JSON object with a JSON array. Actually, it was a Instance IDs, right? Yeah, instance IDs with an array. Actually, we're going to put it in right here. So standard move instance IDs array. And then we'll make one of those. Auto this guy, JSON array. And then for auto, well, const auto, why not make it, why not go full full board const auto reference? It's ID in configuration.instance IDs. Instance IDs array add instance ID, there we go. And this is because I don't have a JSON array constructor that takes a set. Could add that at some point, I guess. And then this needs to return what the test expects. Oh yeah, I don't have a constructor. I do need a constructor. I learned this a while ago that if you define a destructor, you need to have also have a constructor. Technically, it's not one of the rule of five lifecycle command commands or methods it's separate and I can't can I default it here 
I don't remember. I guess so. Maybe not. Hold on. I guess not. What is it saying? Oh. Yeah, I need to go back and fix a lot of references. I moved cluster configuration out. So it's no longer wrapped ice server. It's just wrapped cluster configuration. Uh select all that and then control shift L. And that's not working. How come it's not working? It's select all. Oh, shift alt. Yeah, okay. It's not working. <laughs> For some reason, this isn't working. Oh, no, that's okay. That was the wrong thing. What does expect equal, a macro? Yeah, so I have a nice uh, video about this. It's part of the Google test framework, which is used for test-driven development. So this is given to me by the, the Google test framework, and what it does is whenever it computes these two values, if they're not equal to each other, it marks the test as a failure. So this whole thing being one test, which is basically a, te a function, and... Uh, Control shift H. Am I just going nuts? No, it's not control shift H. Maybe I screwed up my uh short my uh shortcuts here. I thought it was control shift L. Not H. I'm gonna have to look it up because I'm a dummy. Okay, VS code. Select all occurrences. And control shift L. I guess I guess my key binding is messed up. So select highlights. I think it I screwed it up because it's now bound to the bookmarks thing. Oh, I think it is selecting it. I'm just dumb. I'm thinking it, I was looking at with my eyes to see if it selects that. I'm just dumb. Never mind. Ignore me. I don't know what I'm doing. That would have done it, right? Okay. <laughs> I use Google because I've been using it for years. And I don't have uh, the Bing setup. There is no conspiracy. That reminds me of, uh, was it the conspiracy of Tim? Was that it? Uh, conspiracy, Tim conspiracy? No. Ah, I can't remember. Someone had a, a, a really, way back in the day, a really cool um, signature that had some kind of thing that, that you just reminded me of. Okay. Okay, so I need to have a constructor for the base class, really? Okay, just more of this stuff that I did not fix yet. Right, more. Okay, it's in the test. So that's where it is. Do, do, do. do you have this project in GitHub? I do have a GitHub. And this part is public. So all of the reusable components are on GitHub. The actual game I'm making is not, though. But uh, the parts that people would probably want are the reusable parts anyway. That That's all public.
Okay, where here it is. This changes to that. Getting there. Compiler has generated a constructor. Oh, yeah, I guess so, huh? Um, wait a minute. What did it say? Function was implicitly deleted because a data member invokes a deleted or inaccessible function. Oh, default delete, de default deletes. But that's not deleted. But let me figure this out later. I'm just gonna I'm gonna clear all this gunt junk out. I know how to do this with a uh, shared pointer, so that's what I'm gonna do. Make shared. There we go. Done and done. I think. Yeah, more, okay, coordinator. I, I need to fix that. All these references to cluster configuration got changed. Since I promoted it out of the iServer to its to the main namespace. Tests. It's wrapped. Do, do, do. I think we're just getting down to linker errors now. I do not have. What is that? Get type? Oh, because I didn't add it to this list. Sort. No, not that one. This one. Source log entry dot CVP. Did I add log entry tests? I did. Okay. Cool. Ooh. Cannot define a compiler generated special member function. Oh, yeah, yeah, I need to remove it. Remove it. Will your game be the next World of Warcraft? I don't think so. I'm just one dude. It's probably going to be all that I hope it to to be, which is not that much. I mean, I've just always wanted to make my own game and, and have that uh, joy of being able to add content and maybe have a few people enjoy it. My expectation is it's not really going to... It's not going to... earn me enough money to make a living. But if it does, I'll be pleasantly surprised. We'll find out. Usually, especially single person indie game studios, they usually fail. I think it's what, 95% failure rate? But there's that 5% that you always hope to get to. But you know, we all learn from our failures. So if nothing else, I'll learn a lot from this experience. Coordinator, hold on. Did I not do all these? Did I not do all the things? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't compile. No, it isn't compiler error. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just didn't see it. Because I stupid. Okay, there we go. Yes, finally. So, all that... Yeah, all that stuff about the uh, 
unique pointer. I, I, I'll have to figure out later. I'm just not doing it right, I think. With shared pointer, though, I'm leveraging two things. Well, one thing mainly. When I do a make shared, there are two things. Well, really, there's three things in that shared pointer. There's the pointer itself. There's a reference count, which I'm not needing. Otherwise, uh, since I'm not needing it, I could have used unique pointer if I knew how, but I'm not using that, sh that reference count. And the third thing is a deleter. The deleter is calling delete on this derived class. So even though we end up passing it off to a shared pointer to the base class, the deleter carries is carried along and it'll end up deleting the derived class. So that's why I don't need to do the, um, make a virtual destructor and I don't have to worry about all that stuff. If the game pays for all the hosting fees, would you keep it online? I'll probably keep it online regardless because I'm, I'm, I'm this is not planning to be a huge deployment. It's probably just going to be one server on AWS. And so I'll probably keep it online just because just it's fun. Probably if it if I were to take it down, I would then just open source the whole damn thing so that if someone else wanted to make some money, they could. And then I'll feel bad if they when they make money. <laughs> but hopefully by then I've moved, I'd be, I, I would have moved on to the next good thing, right? Okay, so anyway, I'm going to run these tests. I'm going to use this nice new sidebar that I have. Wait a minute, raft test is gone. How, where did it go? May it rescan maybe? There we go. Oh, we have a crash. How come the crash didn't show up there? I don't know. Oh, I don't even have my command line running. Shame on me. The test day 16. Okay, now it's not crashing. Maybe I was just seeing things. I guess I could just focus in on uh, just the test I was adding, right? Which is log entry tests. There we go. Okay, so it didn't really crash. I don't know what I was seeing. Probably the plugin for VS Code was crashing. All right, so that's serialized. Let's do the deserialize. This is the trickier part, I think. Deserialize. So we turn it around. We start with this thing. Oh, serialized entry equals that. Right, and the act is going to be const auto entry equals raft log entry deserialize. Uh, serialized entry. Serialized entry dot to encoding. So ultimately, I think I was going to have them go to, to and from strings. I might change this. I might change my mind about that. Anyway, so what do we expect back? We expect that it is of type that, right? So expect equal that for entry at command get type and then here's where we can do a, a cast because the um, we know the type so this is sort of my version of RTTI we can say shared pointer Or is this where I can use that dynamic cast? Static pointer cast. Yeah, okay, so I can do that. So I can say const auto command 
equals stack. No, I didn't didn't mean to delete all that. It should just be static pointer cast of entry command. There we go. And what does it not like about that? Oh, because this doesn't know about that yet. Okay, so it will in a little bit. So here we can do expect equal then this set. Or command configuration instance IDs. And I should probably also check the term. Entry term. Anything else? Nope. So that's it. Let's make it work. To make it work, I need to deserialize. The so static log entry. Um, do I want deserialize or do I just want to make a constructor? Like I did with message. So message has a where is it? By the way, here's the what was the question earlier from? Um Oh, uh, right. The question earlier was uh, all that um, polymorphism. Is it better than using an enum and a switch? So for message, I am using an enum and a switch. Um, but the, I think I want to move away from it because at least with C++11, I don't have any, way, any better way to do this other than union. To move to C++17, I think there's a variant type I could use, but really it, it's sort of a code smell to me. So for there, I was using a constructor, though. The thing is, there is no default log entry type, is there? So yeah, I think I'd, I want to make it. I want to make it a static factory function. So I guess the the default could be that there is no command. So make it maybe maybe keep it keep the same semantics. So yeah, boot uh, boost. I I I could use boost, but I'm scared of boost. Boost scares me. It has for years because it's so huge. You're right though. I could use that. This needs to be log entry. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, happy New Year's. Not Zane. How's it going? Hi. All right. So it's it's it should be okay for now. It's going to be tricky when I need to add registered factories. So like if the type is not one of the ones that the class knows about, then it'll have to go to to a registry of them. So that's going to be make things a little bit more complicated, but I'll I'll when, I'll handle that when I get there. Log entry. We remove the little thing there. So I'm going to steal a little bit from message, I think. Right, that does th at least this part. And then I can also pull from the term equals JSON term. Oh no, you've been sick? Well, I hope you uh, get better soon. I had this bad cough for several weeks, so I was kind of sick too, but not that sick, just in very irritating. Which is why I've been drinking this throat coat tea. Right? Boga tea? Oh, come on. Boga tea? Throat coat tea for the win. So I hope you, uh, oh, don't be scared of boost. Just don't think of it as one library. I know, but uh, yeah, I, I got to get over my fear of boost. 
The good thing is that all the cool things, I think, from Boost are making it into the standard library, which I'm comfortable with. I just need to update my version of C++, which means I need to get good at the new stuff. That's going to be the subject of a future stream, I think, is I'm going to probably put together a list of all the things that are new in C++ 14, and then 17, and then 20, and then just learn them on stream. And maybe, or, or maybe just record that as a video. I don't know if it's going to be interesting to stream it, but um, then viewers could maybe learn along with me. I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. We had we were using Boost at my last job, and um, Boost was the long pole in compiling things. It just took forever. We we actually got it to uh, we would pre-compile parts of it. But I think the 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 way we um, fit into the build system was was not right. You could just pick out the header only parts and parts that you need and make it a lot faster. Okay, so deserialize. I think what we'll do is, for the ones we know about, I'll turn this into a table later, but for now it's just going to start off with a, a chain of if else. If type as string equals this, then that, and I think that's all we need to do. The default will be it's just null. So command equals standard make shared. Hold on. I need to say, um, const auto single configuration command equals make make me one of those please and then our command is going to be that when we're done but in the meantime let's fill in the details configuration dot instance ids right so it's const auto instance IDs it's JSON command instance IDs command instance IDs right and that's an array so for size T I zero because I don't have an iterator pat iterator pattern for this yet do it the old school way. Instance IDs I. You asked how I configure CMake and VS Code? Search online for, oh, well, good news, Media Code. I made a YouTube video, it's about 30 minutes long, where I show you how to uh, get both CMake and Google Test running in VS Code. So that might help. So the the extensions I use really help out. So the main extension that works for CMake is called CMake Tools. So it looks like this one. Uh, actually, here it is. This I really recommend if you want to use CMake. It it's pretty much automates the process to where you just have this button to rerun CMake, and then you have it gives you a build to actually build with CMake. So it's pretty cool. Hopefully that video helps out, maybe answer some questions. I it I build a project from scratch uh in 30 minutes showing uh, CMake. Yeah. Okay, what did it not like? Oh, what am I doing here? That's dot insert, right? Because it's a set. And we don't care if it insert inserted or not. Okay. All right, it's not deserialized. It's just a constructor. So it's that. And it's not going to be an arrow, is it? It's going to be a dot. Oh, there's a build button on uh, the bottom. Oh, down here. I just hit F7. Does that do the same thing? Yeah, that's cool. Buttons everywhere. There's also a button here to run C tests, which I used for a while until I figured out that I watched, uh, I saw someone else's screenshot, and I thought this was really cool. The test explorer, and to get that to work, I needed, where 
is it? Test Explorer UI, and then Catch2 and Google Test Explorer. So that, those are linked to in my extensions also. So once I got those, I got this nifty side panel there where I can just run all the tests there and it kind of gives me a visual green good, red bad. Of course, it doesn't tell you if your code is up to date like it's not right now because I'm, I got uh, syntax errors. Right, because I got, I blew away the queue somehow. What's wrong with this one? Can it not compare sets? Can no set compare? Oh, um, this might be one of those weird cases with Google tests where you got to do that. No, it's not that. Oh, oh, I'm just dumb. Set of what? It's a set of uh, integers, I think. Right? Yeah, I was just being dumb. I didn't uh, give a type to the set. What's that void por for? I like to do that whenever there is a return value. So insert for a set returns a pair of values. One is a Boolean says whether or not the insert actually did anything. And then the other part of the pair is I think an iterator to get you back to where it was inserted. And I don't care in this context, I don't need those return values. So I, I this is my habit that I cast the return t value to void if to be basically a statement to anyone reading the code saying that there is a return value here and I'm purposefully ignoring it. So if I didn't do that and I read this later, I'd be like, oh, did I forget to do something with that insert? That says, no, I know that insert returns something and I'm saying on purpose I'm discarding it. So it's just a habit I got into. It Yeah, it, it could also, I think it, it some people have that um, to quiet lint or other uh, warning generators that'll warn you that you didn't do something with the return value. But I just do it for my own my own purpose, not not to uh, quiet a warning. All right, so we can run the test again. Oops, I did the wrong thing. This this go button. <laughs> So one thing I don't like about this is I have really no way to tell it I just want to run a log entry test. I could click these individually, I guess. But this gives me more visual satisfaction that, okay, I ran all four. I don't like it when tests pass for the very first time. So one thing I like to do is sabotage the test. Just to make sure it really is running the test. So I'll do something like that. And then I'll build and then I'll run that test again. Here I can do that right here, right? So that broke it. So fix it. And run it again. Cool. Should do the same thing here. Break that test. This might seem silly, but... Yeah, and then pressing that doesn't build it if it's not up to date. I don't like that. Well, but nothing's perfect. There we go. Maybe I'll use this when I want to just run and run all the tests to make sure nothing broke, and otherwise I'll use the command line. Anyway, so we have one command done. I should document stuff now. I can steal the documentation from the message class, though. Yeah. Why write documentation when you can steal it? Turn the string, use the construct, a new log entry. The exact same contents as this log entry. Actually, log entry replaces message in a bunch of places, right? Why don't I use expect not equal to? I could. Yeah, you're right. So I could. I could do that, right? Then we'll see a, a little bit more of a output. It's not completely prettied because I haven't figured out how to do that right, but it basically says there.
actually it should say expected and not to be equal to it just says expected blah actual blah versus blah but yeah you could do it that way too hey there i'm not sure how to say your name i see pablo i get it right what am i making i'm i'm making the game but this is my first game so it probably will fail but we'll have fun it is a multiplayer game so right now and probably for the next month i'll be working on making backend server stuff and we're building a fault tolerant cluster of servers that runs together and the client end will be running a javascript in the browser the cluster server each one has the same state and they um, synchronize through a consensus algorithm and this is sort of the overall architecture on the very top, it talks to the outside world through web sockets, and then there's a coordinator component that implements or uses an implementation of the consensus algorithm, and then a, a log or a journal of state changes that are executed to form the state of the game. So that, that's a 30 second description. If you have any questions, let me know. Working on the back end right now, trying to build in the infrastructure so that you can have state change commands that are written to the journal and you basically you, you replay them in order to build the state of the game back up why don't just use message class for the commands messages for a different thing message was for the rpc calls in raft so there are basically two of them request a vote and append entries and then they have their re return you know other half so it's sort of just for that Message, so messages just for the raft algorithm, whereas the commands are actually persisted to the journal. Uh, yes, here. So for example, if I were to show the architecture diagram, uh, messages are going between these two servers, but they're not stateful. They're uh, idempotent messages like HTTP messages, right? The changes to the game state go through this journal and though those the journal is holding those log entries and so they're persistent they they're written to disk so they're similar but for completely different purposes one's persistent the other's not one carries state the other doesn't yeah so yeah exactly not saying you can do expect equal expect not equal or you can just change the numbers just just i just do that to make sure that a sanity check if i changed it here and it's still passed then i know that something is horribly broken all right i guess i'll fill in the other two well there's three of them there's serialized or four there's serialized and deserialized right these are the commands that i need to have to support live reconfiguration which is what i'm trying to get to next so live reconfiguration would be i have three servers running and i want to add two more and i want it to ha ha handle that automatically and i don't ever have to log into the cloud to do it i would send a command from the client saying hey switch to five servers and the server cluster would would uh, go through this process to safely transition from three to five servers through these configuration commands so a lot of a lot of the complicated stuff comes from the raft consensus algorithm and how that algorithm specifies how to make changes and apply state changes that you know, all that kind of stuff in a fault tolerant way uh, safely so if you want to learn more about that check out the raft Git I github io all right so this is similar right So the provi so provisional and joint are pretty much the same. So it's going to have old and new. So here's, let's have a case where we add a server. We'll add server 10. And this is a provisional. So the reason why there are three kinds of configuration commands, not just one, is because the raft algorithm talks about if you're switching from 
an old configuration to a new, you have to go through an intermediate state called the joint consensus or joint configuration where you have two sets of servers. One that's identified as the old set and this is the new set and they can intersect. So you can see there are four servers that are in both old and new. And you make sure that the cluster runs with both sets running simultaneous and then it's safe to drop the old set. And that, that handles all combinations of adding, removing servers. As long as you do that in that two-step process. And then, then they talk about adding this third step where you'll bring server 10 in, but it's not a voting member of the cluster until it has replicated the state of the cluster. Then it becomes voting. So that's why it's provisional until 10 catches up. And then, and then it joins the, um, the cluster fully. And then we transition to just the new set. So yeah. A bit complicated. Let me change the numbers around a little. Well, I don't need to. I don't need to change the numbers around, do I? So here we'll have old and new. This should go pretty quick because it's just, it's very similar to the uh, single configuration. And in fact, let me go and fill in the one for joint as well. Joint. It's the only difference I think I'll need. And then deserialize, yes. <laughs> Provisional. If I can copy it straight out of here, can't I? Yes. Provisional. This is old and then new. Then I can copy this, paste it down here and call it joint configuration. All right, so we need to find provisional and joint configuration commands. I'm going to need to move this, these concrete commands out of here eventually. This is just a temporary home for them. Really, they don't belong in the public API. They're, they're only used by the raft itself and then the tests for raft. So they shouldn't be in this public API. The public API do needs to have, does need to have command because the rest of the game needs to implement its own state commands. Provisional joint. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, I I had old and new for instance IDs. Really, should be old and new configuration. Yes. So back to the tests. There we go. It's let's fix this. Should be just instance IDs, and that's old configuration and new configuration. I wonder if I should split it. Should have the I should have the JSON reflect the actual structure, shouldn't I? Yeah, I think I'll think I'll make that change as well. All right, so let's change this a little bit. So it should be configuration, JSON object, and then that inside of that. And this similarly. Like that.
All right, so that's all in place. All right, so in here, we're gonna, we need to have two more pairs. This is joint. And then provisional. Okay, so old and new. Old and new. Okay. I could uh, merge joint and provisional together, but I might vary them in the future, so I'm going to keep them separate for now. They'll just have exactly the same details, just different types. Uh, yes. So, uh, this will break the single configuration command, but I, I want to see, actually see that. Actually, it broke all of them. Right, because I moved it. Well, let's fix the single configuration one first. So, that is, I moved this into configuration. Just because there might be other things in the configuration later. Oh, hold on. Where is the, uh, oh, oh, uh, I'm just, I'm stupid. Here is the uh, other end. It's not really balanced, is it? Really, I should have each of these classes have a constructor, and this one defers to that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, so instead of defaulting it, we can we can make this encoding. And then I can go to here. What does it not like about that? Oh, because it's not default. Not default at all. Okay. Right, so then we can have have them here. Remove that default. And then I can move that the body of this in there. Here. Actually, if we know it's in JSON, I can make it JSON, right? So const, right, JSON value. And hmm. I can't remember. Do I have a null? Oh, that's right. I, I, there's a ca implicit cast I allow from null pointer. Yes. Sort of funny, but there's a null or invalid 
Actually, there's both in, in this the idea of an invalid JSON value and a null value. Yeah, we'll just use the null. But the null value means that there's no. Um, it's just the default. Okay, so. Mm, encoding. Really, I should be symmetrical here. But then I say two encode. I don't want to mix my words. Let's just say JSON. Um, well, it's a uh, R value. Well, no, L value. Yes, it's an L value. But um, it's basically going to construct a temp. If you don't pass in something, it'll construct a temporary from null pointer. So I have a JSON value constructor from null. It'll make a temporary and pass that by reference, which is fine because it's a really light object. And if you do any kind of this referencing when it's null, it just does nothing. So it should do the right thing. Its size should return zero. This should return basically a null value. Yeah, it's all it's all null safe. So this we can remove. And then we don't actually this moves down to here, doesn't it? And then this moves JSON command I don't want to break this up how about like that and then this I can remove the command part oh but uh, we made a configuration right instead okay so that means provisional needs the same thing And here it's old, it's new configuration and old configuration, right? All right, and then joint is the same as provisional for now. May or may not change, may or may not fold together. Okay, so then I can just go down here and do else if that. Then make one of these. And then finally the joint one. Do, do, do. Okay. Oh, command. Command. Okay, what? What? Okay, that we know about. What's the error? Fatal error linking. Invalid section for comdat. What does that mean? Eh. Build again. <laughs> Flakiness in the tools. Just had to build again and it fixed itself. Okay, so. That's interesting. So deserialize for provisional is failing, and then serialized and deserialized for joint is failing. Oh, I think I might have made a copy miss, copy paste bug.
Oh yeah, actually this is wrong, right? Should be like that. I had it wrong before. This is also wrong. And this is wrong. And this is wrong. No, it's right. It when both expects I had it wrong. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, you're right. Look at that. Thank you. I would have found that. I would have. <laughs> Probably here too. No. It's interesting. I made the mistake here, but not in the other one. Oh, something's still wrong. Command. Oh, configuration. Okay, yeah, this is wrong. So, A, D, 6. I think it's in the serialization, right? Yeah, okay. So I wanted the, the JSON structure to reflect the C++ structure. And here too. Still bad. Oh, new, that new shouldn't be in there. Here too. There we go. I'm, I think I'm just going through this too quickly and I'm missing stuff. All the naked strings in JSON must cause a lot of bugs. Eh. But they get the gl bugs get uh, um, exposed in the unit tests. It's the price I pay for wanting to see it in JSON, I guess. Okay, what? 118? Oh, yeah, look at that. That should be new. Make the same mistake down here? Yes, I did. See, my unit tests are catching all these little things. New in new instances, wrong. Thanks for following. Warbenjinger? That's my best attempt to say your name. Sorry if I screwed it up. Yeah, there we go. So, I could have missed something. I probably did. But my philosophy is that I wait until I see the problem. I come back and fix it by adding another use case. And that's the price I pay. Yeah, there's a trade-off, right? Between how much time you're willing to spend. And I have spent a lot just to test this code, right? The code is less lines of code than the tests. I think a good rule of thumb is this. You want to you want to go you want to have as many lines of test as you have lines of code. So I might have gotten a little over with the testing, and I need to refactor this stuff. This I want to move into a table of factories. And these probably need to be broken out into their own files. And the provisional and joint configuration could share the same code right now for the... Um, actually, they could share a lot of the same code. They re could really just be the same structure with the Boolean in it. Anyway, uh, let me... Good first step, I guess. <laughs> Let... I'm a keyboard challenge today. There we go. So we are adding, yes, let me check a few of these thing, things in separately. This line is because we, we moved the cluster configuration out. Um, 
I suppose. No, all of, hold on, what did this happen before? Or this didn't have anything before, so it's not affected by the move of cluster configuration out, but this is, that is not, that is not, this is. Someone's at the door. Hold on, I'll be right back. That was Amazon package. Just started in programming. This looks insanely complicated. I figure it won't hurt to see practical application. Uh, a practical application will look insanely complicated. Like when I first started my first job, it took about four weeks to go from like this, all this stuff is crazy. I don't understand anything to where I'm like, oh, I start to understand bits and pieces of it. It just takes time. There's a big leap to go from like academic, like hello world programs to um, real world stuff, especially in highly integrated stuff. So if you look at my server diagram, this is pretty crazy, right? This is like this component alone has five things it talks to either directly or indirectly. So it gets pretty complicated. But that's what you got to do when you're when you're building a real world thing. You got you make you try to separate into as many little little pieces as you can, so that you can make each piece something that you develop separately. And hopefully, the pieces, the smaller they are, the simpler they are, and the complicated thing is how they interact. <laughs> and I'm I might not be the best. I probably, of course, I'm not the best. It could be done better. So when you when you're looking at my practical example application, it could be improved. Part of, part of the process is I learn every day. I learn little things to help make it better. Okay, so this commit is just server move cluster configuration, or really promote it. Promote cluster configuration out of i server interface so because we need it outside okay and then this one is just adding log entry adding commands to log entries right log entry add commands add add command objects or now support only the three kinds of commands we expect to need single configuration provisional configuration joint configuration there we go yeah refactor is part of the process so for example i will sometimes have entire stream sessions where i'm just refactoring like on the 19th of December, I only refactored my con coordinator component. So I spent the whole whole four hours refactoring. And maybe I don't even do it enough. So the the general rule I like to follow is you first make it work, then make it right, then make it fast. So making it work is the first pass, and then making it right is when you refactor to make the code you know readable and reusable. And then making it fast is when you have everything assembled and it's you find out it's too slow and you need to speed it up. So those those three steps in that order usually. All right, I think I've set for log entry. We don't support the other like so I could refactor at this point or I could continue on to orchestrator. I could demonstrate what orchestrator does for people who are watching who haven't seen this before. So. If I stage everything and then serve, we're seeing the log of the coordinator right here. I mean, not the coordinator, the orchestrator. The orchestrator starts all the servers if they're not running. 
and then shows us sort of a a combination of their logs. So each one of these is a log message from a different server, and I just arbitrarily number them 10, 11, 12, just to emphasize that they don't start at zero and they might not be sequential. Actually, I guess I should be doing like 10, 13, 17 or something if I really wanted to illustrate that. But anyway, the orchestrator, if it um, detects one of the servers has crashed or has frozen, it will kill it and then restart it. So if I were to say, run task manager here and find server, say server 10 is the leader, right? So it's in 5872. So we were just to kill that server, watch what happens. So here's what happened. First, we got a detection from the orchestrator that its connection to server 10 was broken. And then it figured out, oh, that it must have died. Meanwhile, servers 11 and 12 held a new election to find a new leader because 10 was the leader. And 11 was picked as a leader. And then these are all errors from 11 and 12 saying, hey, we lost our connection to 10. Then what happens is the orchestrator, after a couple seconds delay, because I have that programmed in, it relaunches server 10. And after a few more, th these connections must have r raced that one, but eventually they they will connect and then server 10 will learn that 11 is the new leader in term two and we continue running. And I can kill a follower, for example, like 5,700 is a follower. It's less dramatic. If you kill a follower, the uh, leader and the other follower complain about not being able to uh, connect to it for a while until the orchestrator restarts that follower and then it rejoins and there was no leadership change in the meantime. So that's what the orchestrator does. And uh, right now there's one orchestrator uh, There's one orchestrator per host, and the orchestrator only connects to the servers on its host. But I need to extend that so that if these three servers were running on different computers, I would need this orchestrator to still connect to all three of them, because whichever one becomes a leader is going to want to tell us if there are any configuration changes. Why is there a leader? Can't the orchestrator be the leader? It all has to do with that raft algorithm. So the algorithm was designed so that only one of the servers that actually has the state, so only one of the realm servers can be the leader. And that's because only the leader can make changes to the server state and it needs to have a complete log of all changes. So it's gotta be one of these servers. I purposely made this orchestrator outside and not a realm server because I want it to be simpler so it won't run the game at all. Its job is just to start and stop realm servers. So it, the code for this is actually all, almost done. We only need a few more things to it, like the stuff today. But um, it started and run differently. It doesn't run fault tolerant. If it crashes, then um, I'm relying on the OS itself to restart it because I'm running it as a system daemon. Um, but, you know, it could lose state. I'm trying to put very little state in here and push all the state into the cluster. Um, the only reason I have this at all is the raft algorithm doesn't specify how to start things in the first place. They refer to it as an administrative function. So my administrative functions are in the orchestrator. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully that gives an idea of why orchestrator can't be a server and why it can't be the leader. Uh, okay, so we need to have it connect to every server, not just the ones on the same host. Yeah, and the orchestrator, it it's just a program, a simple program, so I don't have tests for it. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be doing test-driven development for this. I'm just gonna go s straight to modifying it. We're gonna have to connect to every host, and I don't have a setup for this to test it either. But we'll just do the code for it. And then after we have it, con we have it connect to every server, even on ones on other hosts. Then we need to implement this stuff. So basically, whenever a server that is the leader receives a, a log entry, which is a configuration change, it's got to tell the orchestrator. And also whenever the orchestrator connects, it needs to tell it what the current configuration is. And um, yeah, when if the configuration changes or if we become leader, we have to contact them. So in other words, in all possible ways that an orchestrator would need to know that the um, leadership or the configuration has changed. Okay. 
Uh, actually, before I do that, though, let me take a minute break for uh, just to refill my tea. I'll be right back. Just a minute. I'm back. Oh, my camera is a little fuzzy. What that is is the uh, chroma key for my blue screen behind me. If I go too aggressive, I fade out. If I don't if you don't do it aggressive enough, it doesn't block it out. As lighting changes during the day, it becomes very challenging to get it quite right. If I had my own office, I wouldn't need a blue screen, and I can just uh, show you a window or something, but I don't have that right now. Okay, all right. Close all the stuff. I'll make sure I checked everything in. Something tells me, yeah, I made root changes, okay. Root repository. Yeah, because that raft changed, right. Coordinator. Update to match latest raft API. So raft i server cluster configuration moved to raft. Cluster configuration. There we go. That's what happened. All caught up. Good, 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 good. Orchestrator changes. Let's do it. So it's n we don't have to worry about launching them, but we do need to try to connect the two Realm servers that are on other hosts. So let me get figure out where this is done. So there we get a process list on our host. We notice if any any of them died. We launch any that aren't running yet. Right, here's where we try to connect. So this is modified a little bit. We don't kill the server if we can't connect. We just, I guess we will keep trying to reconnect. The idea is that every host will have an orchestrator. The one that's on the same host will be in charge of its life cycle, the killing or starting. But other orchestrators still need the communication. And we still need to do the ping. So this known realm servers needs to include servers on other hosts as well. That's the that's the key. So where do I build that? Okay, here it is. So right now I have it skip and not put it if it's on a different host. So I think I'll remove that. Now it's gonna pick up every server from every host. I just have to make sure I don't try to start them. So modify this. So notice if any realm servers on this host died. So we will just skip it. If realm server dot 
Uh, where is it? Where are we put it? I guess we have to look at configuration. Uh, where is this built in the first place? Actually, let's just, we have host here. Let's put it in there. So, realm server dot host. Oh, is it is it there? I just didn't see it before. No, it's not there. So let's put it there. This is the name of the host machine running the server. Okay. So we stored it there so I can get it back here. If realm server dot host is not equal to configuration dot host. Or not configuration, it's uh, environment host, right? Then we'll, we'll ignore it. So we don't monitor it because it's not on our computer. Okay. And the same thing, launch any server instance on this host that hasn't been running for a while. So the same kind of check I need to add there. So right here. Skip it if it's not in our, not on our host. Kill the server if, kill the server if it, if it's running on our host and the connection attempt fails, right. So, So this unable to connect thing, we're only going to kill it if it's on our host. Otherwise, this is just set up for the, uh, if we do get a connection. I have to change this identification though in a bit. Because we have to identify which, well, actually, do we have to? I guess we should identify which host we're coming from, even though the server could figure it out. One big function, that's right. It needs to be refactored, definitely. I could do that today. Maybe in a bit. I'll refactor this in a bit. It was just, it would kill them. So this is, that's good enough, right? When is it going to retry, though? I think that's down here. Oh, no, that's if we're connected. Send an occasional ping. Okay, kill any known server on our host. That So it's, again, the same check here. Actually, we can just build it into this, right? If it's on the same host, it's just another condition that we add to this. Actually, that's more expensive to check the host name than to check the web socket one, right? Let's do it last. And again, down here. Uh, we don't want to kill servers that aren't on our host, so. Uh, too big. Refactor that. <laughs> For now, I'm just going to collapse it. What's If it's not there, it won't. Un unseen. Unnoticed. Configure you make. Does someone know what the hell does that mean? Recipe for target all failed? Depends. The recipe for target all failed indicates that some problem happened and then you got to look like in the output before that. So.
like recipe for target all failed would be similar to this build finished with exit code one. Yeah, it means you have to kind of keep kind of keep looking up until you see a problem. If all you saw was recipe for target all failed, and nothing else, then I then I'm not sure. Is there anything else in in the output besides the failed thing? What I would ask. Like for example, here's the real error here, even though it wasn't the last message. It, it's that it can't open it because I have it running. It has to tell it to stop. There we go. Now I can build it. I wanted to make sure that it doesn't continue to connect frequently. Where does it actually try to make an attempt to connect? Try to connect, okay. Okay, that's here. I guess it it's gonna keep it's gonna continuously try to connect. I guess that's okay, actually. If you have uh the list of output and you wanna put it like in a gist or paste bin or something, I'll, I can take a look at it. All right, I think this is good enough for now. I just need to make sure that it didn't break anything. And then later, I think what I'll do is I'll set up a cluster that spans two computers and test it then again. I need to, uh, well, I guess I could try to do it all on, on stream, but in order to get it to work, I have to make two new certificates. So test cluster spanning hosts. need to make uh, two separate host certificates, SSL. You call them SSL or TLS these days. TLS is the new name, right? Transfer layer security. Kind of took over for socket, secure sockets layer. Thanks for the follow, shells. The shells or shells or shell Z. I don't know. Hopefully you don't mind me butchering your name. Mm, okay, so let's change the identification. Orchestrators, right now, they just say infra hello id orc, but I think I also want to include an identification number. You can do that first in the tests. I have a, a test for this. So here we'll change the requirement. Orchestrator will be identified only, actually let's make two tests. First we'll make it that it fails to identify it if it does not provide an ID, a host name. Oh, orchestrator not identified without host name. So we'll turn this into a false. And we'll say we expect an unidentified private connection. Oh, so it's, so it's shells? Okay. And then orchestrator identified will include... Yeah, I did the uh, manual encoding, but really I could... It might look nicer if I just turn this into JSON. Let's turn it into JSON. So it's JSON object. And then... That turns into a comma. And we remove all these escapings. That looks nicer. I like that better. Then we have to say that that's what we expect. I oh, know this is not expect. It's we have to say two encoding. Right, and then. I can change this one. Oh, grab the whole thing. And that this is what we're going to be adding. So host will be, or I guess local host for now. Doesn't really matter as long as it matches what's in our configuration. Local host.
Let me look to make sure that this is not tested anywhere else. Infra. Okay, yeah, so let's copy that here as well. Okay, and here's another one where I need it. And okay, let me clean this up since I have the opportunity. This is not the orchestrator, this is the realm server. It identifies itself by giving an instance number. Rostering literals? Yeah, but um, I, I like this even better than that, is to just um, show it like the JSON that it is, and, and then to, tell it to encode it as a string. The R thing, is that new to uh, C++ 17? Um, oh, no, I guess it, I guess I could, I could use it in C++ 11. Two delimiters, what's the example? Ah, I see. So I could use whatever delimiter I want. Oh, no, there's a delimiter inside the string. I get it. I get it. I see. I can pick whatever delimiter I want. Cool. I didn't know that. Nice to know, but if you don't mind, I'm going to stick with my JSON class for now. Yeah, it's just... I don't know why I didn't do this before, but it really looks better this way. I gotta be careful on this one though. It's two, and it's one three three seven there. Wow, I did this a lot of places, didn't I? Eighty five. Oh, this is an evil server. One, three, three, seven, and then through the client two, that one. Do do. I might have skipped one. Uh, there's a lot of places. I didn't expect to have to be cleaning up this much. <sighs> That's what I get for uh, being lazy, I guess. Come back in here and clean it up at some point. Probably should have a helper that does this and not Paste it everywhere. Ah, here we go. This is different. This I have to say host, local host. And again, here, actually, um, yeah, I'll type it again. Orchestrator, yeah, okay. Orchestrator, host, local host, all right. And we're done. So hopefully I did not break all those tests. I, I will have broken the first two tests though. So this is realm server test, realm server, and this is coordinator test. Right, so it's, oh, this one shouldn't have broken. Ought to, I must have, must have broken that unintentionally. 10, 
21. Hmm. Let's ask Git Lens. What did I change there? Ten twenty one. Oh, it's one three three seven in both places. That's what it is. Right, so it's just the orchestra not identified without host name that fails. Right, so let's fix it. New question, what's the difference between Visual Studio 2017 and Visual Studio Code? So Visual Studio Code is mostly just the editor, which has been ported to the Electron framework. So it's it's uh, using the Chromium framework, right, in Electron. So it looks like Visual, the editor from Visual Studio 2017, for example, but it's running in the Chromium framework with a bunch of extension points. So like, there's like a bazillion different extensions for it now, whereas, I mean, there are also extensions for Visual Studio, but there, there aren't quite as many as there are for Visual Studio Code. And um, the, main, the main reason why I'm using VS Code is because it runs the same, because it's on Electron framework, it runs the same on Windows, Linux, or Mac. Whereas Visual Studio only runs really on Windows. There's a Visual Studio for Mac, but it's really just a Xamarin Studio ported or renamed or whatever. So I, yeah, I, I, I'm into wanting the tools to be as similar as possible when I have to jump to like Linux or, or Mac. That's why I'm using it. The um, the editor stuff is great. The stuff that's not so great is the debugging. So there's there's debugging stuff, but it's not quite as nice as the Visual Studio 2017 debugger. So I'll flip back to Visual Studio if I need more advanced debugging stuff. But yeah, it's mostly that it's the editor way more extensible than Visual Studio without all the other stuff for Visual Studio that I don't need. All right, so the thing that I broke On line 869. Right, so right now it's it's saying it's true, right? It's identifying it as the orchestrator even though it didn't give a host name because this is a new requirement. So let's go change the code to fit the new requirement. Mm, where would that be? In the engine, I guess? Engine is sort of a stupid name, but I couldn't think of a better word. Right, so I think what we need to do here either in this function or before we call it, is we need to make sure it has a host. And right now there's only one orchestrator, so... Yeah, let's get the host name out. So let's say const standard string host is message host. If host empty, if, if not host empty, then we'll pass along the host name. Context, WebSocket, message. Since we've already decoded the host, I guess we'll send that along. So this will, hold on, how do I search for this? Yes, this is how we do it. Two places, so here we'll add the host. Oh, it reminds this documentation stuff reminds me I I forgot to document a bunch of stuff back in from an hour ago. Uh, this is the name of the host running the orchestrator. Am I using the compilation database generated by CMake to get code completion? I think it's a mixture. Uh, by default, like you'll get a pop up in the bottom right when you first uh, open your project in VS Code as long as long as you're running the CMake tools that asks you do you do you want to allow CMake tools to build the uh database? 
and that's fine except for some things didn't work for me so i had i had to add something else in here it was under dot vs code cpp properties i had to add this include path to basically say search all folders it's kind of a hack so it's going to find folders that shouldn't be in the include path but basically this is for intellisense to look for any kind of header files because the CMake tools couldn't quite figure that part out. So I don't know if that's a bug or shortcoming or what, but so combination of CMake tools automatically sending up and then that thing. So thanks for the follow. A mod PC 10. Oh, I said your name right. No, I didn't. <laughs> there was an M in there. A mod PMC 10. So there's where we declare it, there's where we call it, and there's where we define it. So we need to add this here. So I think what I'll do is I will store them by index. So that breaks that, but then we can go fix that by making this a map from string. So you might ask, what happens if it's already in the map? Well, we can just, we're just dropping the old one and adding the new one, I guess. This holds all connections, plural, to orchestrators, if they're connected. And if they're connected and have identified themselves, the keys are the host names the names of the hosts running the orchestrators all right so let's make that plural and look look for all the red dots on the right these little red dots tell me what i need to change so send message to orchestrator right this needs to be plural so really should have a test for this. Let, let me make a placeholder. Oh, I have, already have some placeholders. I never got to these. Oops. Oops. Okay, so... So, announce leadership change to multiple or to all orchestrators. So, we're not doing... We're not doing plural orchestrators yet. Is standard map better than unordered map? Uh, I don't know if it's better. It's just my go-to map is map because it's just three letters and by default I get the sorting of the keys. I, I don't really know unordered map too much, but I, I'm assuming from the name that it's a specific kind of map and the reason why I would pick a specific kind of map would be that I have a, a good reason. So I just go, I go with the shorter names for, um, if I don't have any reason, any specific reasons why not to. I'm sure Spider's work knows more about it than I do. I'm assuming unordered map is, uh, it's specific for some reason, the performance or, or some kind of interface that, I, that I don't really need. Okay. So send, this should be plural. And we're going to loop through, I think. So, for const auto orchestrator entry, in orchestrators, IntelliSense is screwed up because it doesn't know what, um, it doesn't know about that yet. Let's fix that. This method is called to send a message to all connected orchestrators. And this should also be plural. All right. We can fix it in both places. And then this should be orchestrators entry, oops, dot second. Um, right now the T is cool. And it's just the throat coat tea that you get at a uh, supermarket. 
it's kind of sweet by itself. I didn't have to add anything. Almost too sweet for me. I don't really like sweet tea. But I'm drinking this throat coat tea because I had a cold that was making me cough and it was very inconvenient for streaming. Okay, we don't need to do this check anymore, do we? All right, so here, when the WebSocket is closed, we don't just have one, we have many, so we need to search to find which one it is. So I guess what makes sense to me is we would iterate through. Or auto orchestrator entry equals orchestrators dot begin not equal to end. If WebSocket equals orchestrators entry dot second. And then it's orchestrators dot erase the entry and break right oh i'm glad it helped you out cool um that's because it's an iterator we need to dereference it all right That's a plural, and that's plural. Is that it? No, obviously not. Oh, that's interesting. Got a bunch of warnings. I don't know why. Okay, so is orchestrator identified? Oh, that's complicated. Who needs that anyway? Is that just for test? Okay, yeah, it's only used for by the testing framework. You know what we'll do is we'll just return the whole dang map. So we'll change this. This re this method re provides that, or we'll just say imperative case. Provide read only access to the orc the collection of orchestrator connections. This is used internal. This is only used internally by the test framework. And return. A read only reference to the collection of orchestrator connections is returned. So we'll re rename this get orchestrators. So this becomes expect true that it's empty. Actually, I should change this from a bool, shouldn't I? Uh, it's const standard map string to share. Maybe I should make a type for this. <laughs> Let's make a type for it. Oh, thanks for the follow, Lamerio. Thanks for the follow. So, orchestrators. Where are you, orchestrators? Oh, right, it was in the engine, wasn't it? There it is. So, this complicated type, let's... Let's make a define for that. Um, where would that go, I guess? Hold on. I guess we have to, we have to put it here, right? Because here's where we got to return it instead of bool. So let's define it here. Types. Orchestrator collection is a map of strings to shared pointers to web sockets. Mm. 
This type is used to hold a collection of connections, to, of open connections, to orchestrators. The keys are the names of the hosts on which the orchestrators are running. All right, so that's what we'll use for get orchestrators. A const reference to that. And then, let's see, where's the find? Oh, let's find get orchestrators for now. Fix up the references I have to that. So this, right. Well, thanks for the follow, Spider's Orc. I like your name. Do you use Clang format? No, I don't use Clang format. Is that like a formatter for the editor? I don't know what that is. Okay, here I'm going to use a trick, just because the name of the type is inside the class scope, so I can say this. And I uh, just return orchestrators. How come it didn't like that? I think that's stale, actually. I think it's a stale, a stale marker. Right, we can, that's correct. Fun with programming on Twitch. Don't even know it was a thing. Trying to guess what you're making. So far, nothing. Oh. Did you uh, see the um, intro thing? Spider Zork? I'm working on a game. It's my first game. Based off of a bunch of web tech that I developed on stream. So I started way back in the end of June. My goal then was to make my own web server. And uh, to show off test-driven development. And... So I worked on components for parsing URLs, and then I did message headers, like HTTP message headers, and then eventually I got to making a, a rudimentary web server and then JSON parsing. Then I, I finally got to where I had the web server operational and I had this little chat room thing I was playing around with. And then I did some stuff on the side, like a, a Twitch, the Twitch messaging stuff. So I made a Twitch bot and I figured out transport layer security. But then I got to the point where it was at the end of October that um, I, I was, what do I do next? I took a, a, like almost a, yeah, it was a month long break. And then when I came back, I figured out, hey, I'm going to make a game with this web stuff. So that's since the end of November, I've been developing this game. It's not playable yet, but I really liked the, the game Ultima 5 when I was growing up. And the graphics are pretty simple, so I thought, hey, this is something I can maybe do, something approachable for me. And the multiplayer aspect is requiring a bunch of back-end server work, which is what I've been doing for the last month and probably will take another month to do, at least. But when it's up and running and I can actually add stuff to it, these are the kinds of things I want to add to it. So I want to ha have a lot of different exploration, a lot of different activities you can do in the game. And the game will be browser-based because the architecture makes it really nice to do for browser-based games. So all the connections between servers and clients and servers to servers is through WebSockets. It's really easy to do that in JavaScript. So I'm going to make a basic JavaScript client and focus most of my attention on setting up the game servers, getting the content in there, and we'll see how it goes. So. There's a lot to do in the server architecture, so the web front end, which is what I worked on for the two or three months, is already done, and I've been re implementing a consensus algorithm for um, the cluster of servers. The reason why I have a cluster at all is I want it to be fault tolerant, so if any server crashes, I want there to be other servers that'll keep going so that clients don't see an interruption to the service, right? And to get the service to all have the same state and to like go lockstep in parallel, the uh, raft consensus algorithm is what I'm what I have been implementing, and uh, so today's work was mostly to fill in a little of the detail that we need for that algorithm. For um, specifically, the first thing I want to do with it for real on on the live servers is I want to be able to add and remove servers. So that's configuration change. So hopefully that gives you a little 
orientation about where I am. But if at any point you're curious, you can go look at the this today command brings you to this page here. And all every stream I have notes for it. So if you want to see like you can search to the, through this or you can see what I was working on the last few days, you can kind of get a sense of what I'm doing. So, yes. Orchestrators. Okay, that was that, that was compiling there. Okay, it's somewhere else. Oh, right, because I didn't finish. Um, this is identified as is now different. Right, so instead of it being false, what do we expect? I expect it to be empty, right? And when it is identified, we should expect it to be not false. I mean, expect it to be false, that empty is false. This should be true. Does anyone know the application I'm using to organize the notes? It's one note. Oh, in fact, stream elements uh, already said so. <laughs> yeah, so... I uh, make it publicly read read only, so you can look at it through the OneNote app, um, web based app. Okay, so I think this just replaces everything here. Oh, except for this one should be a true that it's empty. So if it wasn't identified, it's not an empty set. All right. Is that it? Formatter for C++ files? Okay. Yeah, I don't use a file formatter for C++. I use formatter for CSS, but I, I just gotten used to doing my own formatting by hand. Ooh, okay. More work to do. Yes, so when we demobilize this, so we just clear clear the collection. Instead of it being one pointer, it's a collection of many. Oh, okay. Um didn't I have a didn't I have a helper for this? Send message to orchestrators. Yes, I did. There we go. Only what? It doesn't like the type of that? Oh, it's just a stale compiler error. All right. That's a plural. What now? Oh, the test. There's a problem in the test. Oh, I forgot to... I'm dumb. I was going to go and replace... I guess I can just do it here. That's get orchestrators. Replace all. Yes. Cool. Okay, so let's run the test to make sure nothing broke. Cool. Uh, let me run all my tests. Actually, uh, I should just use this thing, right? Oh, it looks like I have a... F Ooh. That's something I didn't even touch. How did that happen? That's one of the things I fear is like a test that'll fail and I don't get the details of it. And I try to run it again, it'll probably not fail. It's one of those spurious fails that I... Yeah. That's going to haunt me. Like, which test failed? That's another reason I should be using this thing. If it failed, I could have seen exactly why it failed. I bet you it won't fail again, though. I wonder if, was this running at the same time as that? And that might have been why that failed. The system abstractions library uses some hard-coded hard port numbers that if you run it twice, if you run the same test in parallel on two different instances, you could actually get a failure. Maybe I won't, I won't worry about that. Anyway, tests are all passing. So I'm going to check that change in. Wait, so now... 
Now we're able to accept connections from orchestrators from different hosts. And we should send it equally to all. Oh, should I fill in that missing test? This one? What is this? Oh, the, I'm going to delete this because it's no longer applicable. That's I was working on re reconfiguration before, and this is um, old design stuff, so I never needed to write that. Yay. This I should do, though. I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay, so this one... Okay, let's, let me steal the code from where we have a single orchestrator. How about this one? And we'll just have two orchestrator connections. So configure mobilize and then what was this for anyway? Oh, well, this is for when we receive a message. Yeah, so let's let's pro reprogram this to wait for all text messages are received. We're going to expect two of them now. Okay, so let's I need a case where I have a second client. Right, so it was this kind of common setup stuff I need. Should probably put this into the test fixture so I don't have to copy paste it, but I'm lazy. I am lazy. Let's just set it up way up here. This is just to set up a, a, a fake connection. We need two fake connections now, so we we have one built in to the fi fixture, but the second one I don't have built into the fixture yet, so that we have to do this kind of crap. Um, I'll clean it up later. <laughs> I say later, I'll probably never get to it. Anyway, so we we connect, we send in a message, let's say find localhost, and then we'll have another connection. This is number two. And we'll say we are foobar from the host foobar. The so leadership change happens. We should expect two messages sent. And we should expect them from. Actually, uh, we're only storing we're only storing who it with the content, right? Should I be storing who it's going to as well? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, I just have to set the delegate on both of them. Okay, that should be good enough. And then we'll expect it from both. There we go. You know, Python, since you had web stuff, you... Wait a minute, let me read that again. Hey, do you know a Python since you said web stuff you did? I know a bit of Python, so. Oh, why did I not submit? Oh, I wasn't done. Um, I have multiple repositories in my workspace. And so I have this tool called Mugget, which I wrote in Python to help manage that. So here's all the Git repos I have, right? So I know enough about Python to make tools. For example, this Mugget tool, which you can you can look up more information if you want. Um, but I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm an expert at Python. I just know enough to make tools. So I, I would say I probably know beginner Python, maybe some intermediate stuff, but I'm, I'm certainly not an expert at it. I don't see a lot of Python in web stuff. Usually web stuff is JavaScript or, or well, Node.js or PHP. Um, I suppose people do use Python for web stuff, but I don't see it as much. Uh, yes. 
Okay, that failed. Why did that fail? We should have gotten two messages back. Oh, okay. I can't use move. That's why. Um, shoot. Does that mean I have to set it up again? I think I think that is what I have to do. Um, well, I can just make a copy of it and then say delegates two dot text equals delegates dot text, and then just move like that. I th I uh, that's okay. If if uh, as long as I got the gist of what you're saying. Hey there, Andorn. How are you doing? How's your How's your holidays? And happy New Year to everybody, by the way. In fact, it's probably New Year, so a lot of people watching, right? Well, no. If you're in Europe, it may almost be New Year's. If you're in Australia, it was New Year's yesterday. <laughs> All right, so I passed the test. Great. Let's check it in. <laughs> All right, so this was coordinator. Accept connections from multiple orchestrators. I keep track of orchestrator. Let's make this two bullets by their host names. Require orchestrators to announce their host name on identification, when identifying themselves. Two hours, all right, and one hour. Nice, countdown. For me, it's only 1 p.m. And actually, I'll probably only stream for another hour because I need to. I need to at least take a break, if not stop streaming after like four hours. Otherwise, I um, I break down. <laughs> All right. I think actually, I think I'm done with the plan. Yeah. Well, we haven't. I haven't done configuration stuff yet at all. I think I'll hold that off to till the next day. I think what I'll do is do some refactoring because we were seeing before how sort of gross the orchestrator is and it's got one monster function here. I should probably go fix that, right? Refactor this a bit. Let's do some refactoring. So, and in, in Doran, you're not traveling at the speed of light. So your your time is, is not advancing any What would it be? Quicker for you? I can't remember. Quicker for you and slower for me? That was really a dumb joke that I made the, about the speed of light thing. And I keep trying to resurrect it and mention it on stream and it's not working. Okay, so for, let's see. What is this part here? Let's just pull this apart. That's the shrug pseudo emote, right? And there's the table flip pseudo emote. There you go, there's table flip. <laughs> yeah, there was a it, the joke was uh how do you get um how do you cook a 60 60 second rice faster and it was well if you if you get on a ship and travel towards the speed of light for you it will It'll be faster because time speeds up for you. Not at the speed of light, but approaching it, right? That's all relative to your reference frame, of course. Okay, anyway. We are... Okay, this part... It's kind of mixed, right? Let's see if I can pull this apart. There's this... This is setting up the web front end. This is renewing our configuration. So really we should just do this first. We should set up our variables up here. Read our configuration. Oh, no, we, uh, okay, well, we had a publisher, yes. 
subscribe to diagnostic messages from the web server. I guess that can go with the server. And then, then we can pull this out maybe. I had this as a local variable because I wanted it to be destroyed when we stop running. Why do I have this separate from this, though? I can I can pull that in. Okay, IntelliSense, help me out. Okay, here we go. I can put that in there, right? Oh, wait a minute. No, I wanted... Okay, it's because I wanted that around. That's why. I wanted to call that later down here, yes. Okay, well. Where do I call that at the bottom? I do. Shoot. I don't, I'm trying to extract methods here, but I don't see a, a way to cleanly extract anything there right now. Actually, this I can extract right out, right? So this is building the known Realm server list. Okay. Yeah, so let's do it. Let's add build known Realm server list. Actually, I don't know if it's a list. What is it? It's a map. It needs configuration, it needs cluster stage, realm server image name, okay. Oh, happy new year. Take it easy. Select a we go. Challenging names for me to say. I probably said it horribly, but happy new year. That doesn't look, oh, actually that, okay, Endurin, I do see how that looks like a sword. With like notches in it. I, okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we need cluster. Is this used anywhere else? Okay, we'll just pass it in. And then up here, just using bookmarks. It's that one. Okay, cluster stage. Ah, there we go. If that's not used anywhere else, I can know it is used somewhere else. Okay. So that's passed in as well. Let's put it there. And then we need configuration. JSON value. All right, cool. Cool. Prepare to refactor. Boom. Refactored. Okay. Only, wait a minute. It needed stuff, right? Configuration. Cluster stage. Realm server image name. All right. So, next. What I'd really like to do is take this part out and call it, like, worker loop 
our worker thread setup, and then this is worker thread loop. And then after that while thing, it's like worker threads, worker thread teardown. That's what I'd really like to do, but let me, I don't know exactly how to do that without, I'd have to take all these local variables out and put them, put them somewhere that can be shared by the functions I extract. That's the complicated part. Um, in these in the, these individual commented things really could be pulled out, right? So ultimately, this is just building realm servers found, right? Oh, and it could also be killing them. So okay, let's just take this whole thing. Don't know what we're going to do with it yet. I'm going to paste it in there. I think this ends up getting returned. So it's... Um, it's really... No, it's doing multiple things. It's finding which Realm servers are running and then killing the ones that shouldn't be. I just, I'm struggling to find the right verb. <laughs> like process. Now, process is a bad word because I use the word process list. Um, go through process. <laughs> this is not what I'm going to call it. This is what I. This is the long name I need to shorten. And locate realm servers, killing those that should not be running. So the challenge is to make that into one word. Too long, it needs to be shortened. I guess we can just ha say the killing those that should be not, should not be running is like a side effect we can just do. Uh, but we'll just call it locate realm servers. Names, yeah. It's all about finding a good name. So we'll call it ro Locate Realm Servers. So we'll just have it return that when it's done. And it has this side effect that if it finds a Realm Server that shouldn't be running, it'll just stop it. What is that? Is that only used inside there? So I can make that local. I can make that local. I'll just need to pass in the realm server image name, which I am sharing with that function, apparently. And I need a now. OK, now is uh, the current time. Yeah, I do. I, I think I do want to pass it in. Just so I don't have to sample the timekeeper more than once per loop. So, double now. Cool. We might refactor that even further. But for now, it will be locate realm servers, replaces all this gunk. Oh, wait a minute. Um, We're going to reconstruct that every loop. Is that okay? Eh, fine. So it's, it'll be auto equals that. And then we need, it needed realm server image name, right? And now. Maybe I just pass that in. That name is long. Should I just pass it in anyway? Okay, fine. 
I don't have to build it every time. It's just a long name. I don't like long names like that. All right, that replaces all of this stuff, right? Okay, we have a break. Okay, something else goes through the process list. Hmm, okay. Okay, so we can make that external. Vector of process infos. Okay, fine. The process info is again a look um, within system abstraction sub process. Okay, fine. Processes. So I'll just pull that out. Okay, cool. So what's next? This one? Yeah, this one should be clean. So pull that out. What 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 are we doing here? Notice if any realm servers in this host died. Okay, so that's like reap. Dead servers, I guess. So we need what was returned earlier. This one. All right, reap dead servers. Sounds good to me. Okay then. This whole thing, let's pull the comment too. So this will be called launch servers. Configuration, not a problem. That's this guy. What else does it need now? Realm server image name. Well, thanks for following. Michael Lavigno. Oh, Michael Lavigno. All right, so that goes there, I think. Should work. Cluster, and these clusters, all these variables I need. <laughs> okay, good. So launch, there we go. We don't need this comment anymore. That was just to help me find a name. Right here. Configuration. Realm server image name. Cluster stage. And now. Replaces all of that. Oh, this is a big one. That's a huge one. That's going to take multiple refactoring stages, I think. All right, so this is uh, this is try to connect. So let's collapse that. I can get a gri grips of it. 
and then up here paste it in in there if that's launch servers i guess this one is connect to servers Okay, so we need a host configuration. Timekeeper. Wait, isn't timekeeper something we store? Oh, no, it's local. Okay, fine. a name uh, that should be a shared pointer all right uh, process okay it needs a process list also processes this one let's put it here all right happy new year hentavirus how are you doing Hold on, I got a phone call. I will be right back. Lunch is on the way. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Okay, then now. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just refactoring right now, Hantavirus. So I have this ugly looking code. Refactoring is all about cleaning up the code. I'm sure you know a little bit about that. Everyone should, every developer, every coder should know what cleaning up their code is all about, right? Okay, I need, a, I need the web client API. Here it is, HTTP client. Uh, not that guy, close him. This one. Um, yep. Actually, you know what? These don't need to be shared. I can make these by reference. This one too. Uh, actually don't, that can't be const reference though. Clean code is important. So my code isn't clean. This is unclean code. It's horrible. So I'm going through and um, cleaning it up. Okay, that does need a shared pointer. So take that back. This one needs to be shared because we're sharing it with a callback. Client though, I probably don't need Oh, is it shared with them too? Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm supposed to not curse. Occasionally, I guess it leaks through. That's why I don't have the family friendly tag. All right, anyway. Oh, we need host configuration there. All right, so we'll just pull it out to where we need it. Not a problem. Actually, where where is that host configuration? I could probably pass that in. Yeah, well, it's, is configuration used anywhere else in this function? It is not. So we can just make that host configuration, pull that out and go to where launch servers is called and paste it there and call that host configuration. And then this doesn't need to get it again. Actually, I should probably just run this to make sure nothing is horribly broken yet. Okay, so to run it, we do st stage and then serve. Uh-oh. Oh, that's right. Um, I forgot the identification scheme changed. So none of the servers are recognizing us as being an orchestrator. So I need to fix that. That That's, simply, that's pretty simple, right? That's where we identify ourselves here. We need to add an 
a host. We need to put our host in there. So that's environment host. Yeah, there we go. I added that a little bit ago, like an hour, and I forgot. So serve that guy. Now? Uh-oh. What did I do wrong? Maybe that's from multiple place. Ah, see. That's a problem. I'm doing it from multiple places. Two places. I need to figure out why and refactor that. There we go. Cool. You can see server 10 was the leader. Awesome. So why was that copied in two places? Connect to servers. Oh, because I'm just not calling the thing. I'm just being stupid. I extracted that function, but I just didn't call it. So let's call it here. All this stuff gets replaced by connect to servers, giving it the host configuration, processes, timekeeper, the HTTP client, and the current time. Oop. Okay, make sure it didn't break. Cool, didn't break. Move on. <laughs> uh, we'll refactor this one. This is the easy one. So go to that one, collapse him. This is ping servers. Goes in here. Actually, this is the host configuration, right? So I just. I should just be using host configuration. Host configuration, orchestrator, ping interval. There we go. And I guess we need now. And we need a timekeeper. Actually, why, why am I not using now there? Good question. I should just be using now there. Oh, maybe that was because I wanted very precise ping measurements. Yeah, so if mu to be ultra accurate, we want to sample the timekeeper right before we send the ping. So that when we get the pong back, we can subtract the two and get very and not have the overhead count. That's why. So I could just sample it twice. Why don't I just sample it twice? Did I, did I think that this would take a long time to execute? This is just checking a pointer, checking a boolean, and doing a difference in a comparison. That should be really quick. Yeah, let's just, we'll, rem we'll remove the now, and we'll just say const auto now equals this. And put that there, right? I might have thought that this is exp this could be expensive though. It shouldn't be expensive. That should be fine. So that replaces this. Host configuration timekeeper. I'll keep those on multiple lines because I don't think that they'll fit. Actually, let me run this showing all the diagnostic messages so I can see the pings. It's uh, debug level zero localhost. Yeah, that's right. There we see. Ping round trips. So about a millisecond right now with nothing optimized. Not that bad, huh? So when I run everything optimized, it'll get even faster. One would hope. It's all pinging servers on the same computer, so it's all loop back in memory sockets, so it should be really quick. Okay, kill. All right, so let's add, let's refactor this guy. Collapse him. 
I don't know what he's named yet. So what does this do? Kill any known server that fails to respond. Okay, so... Didn't I build that into that? They're very similar. I wonder if I should, it should just be part of ping. I think I'm gonna build them, I'm gonna merge these two together. So both of them have a, okay, one's a ping interval, the other one's a ping timeout. These loops fold together, right? Server ID goes up here. We already have a now and a realm server. Okay. So that's just host configuration. Right, so. We can say if it's null, okay, let's let's have an early, early continue. If it equals null, continue. And then we don't need these checks. Remove that check and this check. Now what? Now it's either this or that. So we can, I can move that there. I can say if we're awaiting a ping, do one thing, otherwise do something else. So the, so this be, reduces to this. Going into the else, right? No, the if. And the else becomes this part with without the awaiting one. I could chain I could do that and chain them. But you know, I kind of like the symmetry. I can simplify this slightly. Okay, so the way this reads is we skip it if we don't if we're not connected. If we're so at this point we're connected. If we're awaiting a pong, that means we sent a ping. So if if it exceeds the timeout and it's on the same host, then it then we kill the server. If we aren't awaiting a pong, then and if it's time for a ping, we send a ping. Actually, do I even need to send a ping to, to, uh, I don't even need to send, send a ping to, to, uh, other hosts. So I can do this check first. I can do that up here, actually. So if it's either of these two cases, it's either not connected or it's not on the same host. And then I don't need this check. I can fold that together. Still, these are not completely redundant because they're just, they're two different intervals. There's an interval and a timeout. Yeah, okay, I think that's good. So ping servers replaces this and is combined with that. Uh, hopefully I can remove the comments and it's still readable. Let's refactor this one since I'm Recall this just shut down? Yeah, let's do that. So we'll call this one. This is all about the service, so we'll shut down. And then the other one will be startup, I think. So it needs this unsubscribe delegate. There's a formal definition for that. It is this thing. Unsubscribe delegate. There we go. That's all we need. So that replaces that. There we're done. And now if only I could, I'd like really like to make this startup, but it's got a lot of variables that it sets. 
So it might not be worth it. It'll be it'll be just a long argument list, or I can make a structure, or I could just move these into member variables. It's just that then I I don't get that resource acquisition is initialization. I'm kind of taking advantage of the fact that this time like timekeeper and server they naturally get destroyed when run stops. If I move it to be members of the class, then that won't happen. I could have a structure that holds all these things, and then all these functions could just have one argument. Maybe that's what I want to do. Oh, let me make sure this didn't break. Oh, it did break. Shutdown needed something, right? What did shutdown? It needed the unsubscribe delegate. There we go. Actually, um, that could be by reference. Well, it's a function object, so it's fine. Well, actually, does this does this actually do anything? Does that does that actually work? Okay, fine. Stage serve. Cool, still works. So, oh, by the way, this is all refactoring, right? Yeah, okay. Sometimes I forget to check things into Git, and so I'll make more work for myself later when I have to like unscramble the changes. I think I will. Make a structure. So let's let me define the structure first. So we will have types, and we'll have a structure for. I guess this is the. Service state, I guess. It's only when we're running. Service run state. How about that? And then we'll just put everything in there that we need. Oh, thanks for the follow. Numerical user number 127001. Mr. Destructoid welcomes you to the channel. All right. <laughs> so we're going to put... I'm going to pull all of this stuff into the uh, setup. So this will be setup. Setup uh, service worker state. Oh, service run state. It's kind of a long name. What if I can make it shorter? Actually, uh, I don't need to because I could just make all of these functions member members. Well, no, that that won't quite work. Will it? Does they access other things like shared? Um, hmm. One thing at a time. Let's make the setup before I forget. Setup should go first. Actually, setup uses build, right? That doesn't really matter what the order is. Setup maybe goes with shutdown. All right, there's setup. So we know it's going to have a service run state. Okay, so it's these things I need to move into that service run state. All of these things. 
So it's going to have a shared pointer to a timekeeper. Actually, um, I can do this trick. I can make it as part of its default, and then configuration is different, though. So that is what? That's a JSON value. It's actually not changed while we're running, though, is it? Oh, it's not right now, but it might. OK, so it might be changed. Server, and then. Yeah, this guy we said was one of these types. One of the long name guys. And right, so we make one. Okay, so it, it has it has a failure path. That means I like to do failure paths like this where we return false on these early exits and then right here return true and then when we call setup we have say an if not then return exit failure all right right so to tie it in i have to say service run state dot Actually, um, a part of setup, I'll pull that out. That okay, we don't have HTTP client. Okay, that's because I didn't do it yet. Okay, set okay. Close that. Close that. Set up. Okay, so we don't need to do that, but we do this now. And then that got moved, right? Oh, hold on. That goes on the left. So these go in front. That goes there. These, I'll go here. Okay, HTTP client gets to move. Up to here, we'll put it next to the server. And then that is also a shared pointer. But we can do the same trick. wonder why it's not const. should be const. The same trick where we created on initialization. Or in, in the constructor or whatever. Okay, so this goes here. We remove that. That goes there. Okay, so I just need to pull that out possibly. Yeah, okay, so that was just a constant we used later. So we'll pull that out and put it here. Well, up here. Realm server image name. Okay, that's also, well, hold on, we need it there. So, hmm. Yeah, so these two do go up here. Uh, where, 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 where am I? Here we go. Actually, we can do that, can't we? We could totally do that and get away with that because those are all just initializers. Cool. So, in fact, yeah, that's exactly what we'll do. So it's service run state dot server name. Is that it? Cool. Okay, so this function looks a lot cleaner. In fact, I could probably remove all of the comments. 
and it's still readable. That's the goal of refactoring is that you should be able to just delete the comments and still be able to read it. So let me try that and see if I can. And there, that's nice. It all fits almost in one screen. So we set up the service run state. We have a little constant here that didn't quite fit anywhere else. Then we have something that we're going to wait for to be told to stop. Until we're told to stop, we sample the current time, get the process list, locate realm servers, kill dead ones. Well, not kill dead ones. Remove the dead ones from the um, our lists. And then... What am I doing this there? I think I'm doing that there because I, I figured that the configuration could change each loop. I didn't want to grab it outside the loop. But anyway, we launch servers and we connect to them and then we ping them. And that happens until we're told to shut down. I like it. So if I wanted to, I could remove... I could move these methods. I could try moving these methods into this service run state. It's just that if they use anything from the service class itself, then I have to give access to them through parameters anyway. I guess I can look and see. So what does setup use? Here, there's a read configuration. I'm going to keep it the way it is for now. I think now I'll focus on um, second level refactoring. So going into each of these functions and um, refactoring the, them individually. So this run is done. Now I've broken it into all these other functions that I can now individually go refactor them. Maybe it does, this deserves to be checked in first and then do the second step. Yeah, let's do that. So make sure it still builds. Check it in and we'll do a Another level of refactoring. Oh, that time server 11 got to be the leader. Oh, ho, ho. Uh oh, I got a crash. If this happens more than once, then I can run, run the debugger. Yeah, I must have broken something. So let's run it in the debugger. Orchestrator. Yeah, so it's all set to go. Let's go. It runs in this other window here, and then I hit Control C. Wait a minute. There we go. So it's crashing there because of why. Bad function call. Empty. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think that I set that right. Um, that should that needs to have been set. Yeah, that's a mistake. Uh, it should be set in the run ser service run state. Let me call it there. And there. Otherwise, we keep it around. Cool. Bound to make some mistakes. All right, cool. Now we're ready to commit it. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't document anything, did I? Shoot. Okay, documentation. It's got to be done. Got to do it. Okay, here we go. Okay, this holds all the state, all the state the, the service has while running. This is used. Oh, Happy New Year, Romania. Hate. Happy New Year. 
This is used to keep track. This is used to... Hold on. Can't I just look at this and see? Track time. Okay. This is used to track time. Kind of silly. This holds the current configuration of the of the game. And this is used... Actually, do I use the HTTP server? I don't actually think I use this right now. This is used to receive incoming connections uh, from... I think it's from clients, but I probably don't even need this, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I'm not even I'm not using that at all. I guess I guess this is a candidate for removal. This is used to receiving connect connections from clients. Note. This is not currently used for any purpose and may be removed soon. It's here because it was in the original design, which has since changed. Um, maybe I'll make that a to-do. I'll keep it around just in case, the off chance I do want it for some reason. It's easier to keep it than to have to add it back after removing it. This one is used, though. This is used to connect to Realm servers. Okay. This is the delegate provided by the diagnostic publisher to be called uh, when our subscription, when we, when we want to cancel our subscription. All right. This is the directory in which all files for the game are staged. As in like where they're stored in the production server. So right now, simple design is they're stored wherever I ended up putting this program. <laughs> so we get the parent directory of our EXE. Okay, this is the Name of the Realm Server Executable. Image. So it depends on if it's Windows or Linux, I guess. Lin Windows or non-Windows, right? Sort of a hack. All right, and then we skip a bit. These are all documentary, and this is not. So describe what this does. Okay, construct. The known realm servers map based on information from the game configuration. All right. This is the configuration of the game. And then I'm going to re repeat what these are. This is where I could possibly pass in the whole structure. But then the function has access to more than it needs, and so I'm not quite comfortable with that. This is pulling out individual pieces that it needs. It just means I do a bit of repetition in my documentation. Okay. Copy that. We're done with this one. Moving on to the next one. Okay, it has three arguments. This is the, uh, it's the same as realm server image. Do, do, do. This is the name of the realm server's executable image with a leading path delimiter in front. Processes. I don't think I have that in, okay, I don't have that documented yet, okay. This, this holds information about all currently running processes 
on on the host machine. Okay. Now this is the current time as measured by the timekeeper used by the server to track time. So it's a little bit wordy, but after I've documented this, I'll probably need to wrap up because lunch has just arrived and I'm hungry. <laughs> so my apologies. But yeah, many finishing up the documentation, I'll do I'll wrap up a talk about what I've done today and what I plan to do next stream. I don't know if I'm streaming tomorrow because it's New Year's Day. Um, but if not tomorrow, then Wednesday. Yes, lunch arriving is a compelling reason. Okay, so remove this. Oh, I didn't say what this does not do that, right? This does two things, right? It kills unknown servers and it recognizes servers already running. Actually, I actually still have this list. Oh yeah, Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's to all you guys. So... Recognize processes which are running Realm servers. For those that should be running, what, do we, what exactly do we do? We record that we saw them. Record their process ID. Record their process identifiers and the current time And the fact that and the fact that we see them running now or those that should not be running kill kill them all oh we'll, we'll just we'll make it more pc stop stop those that should not be running okay stop running you servers okay next function close this one up so this one doesn't do that anymore and this is not what that is. Um, this is the collection of process IDs of Realm servers currently running. Right, so update internal records for any Realm servers that were previously running and no longer are. Okay. Okay, I'm going to copy this one. Collapse, paste there. So, so start realm servers that aren't yet running. Hold on a sec. That's my mute, my quick mute overlay when I need to talk to someone in the background real quick or if the dog's making a lot of noise. Okay, this is host configuration, it's a subset. This is the configuration, not of the game, but this is the configuration of the, well, this is the game's perspective on the configuration of the host running this orchestrator. Okay, and then that's that. And oh, I, I guess I re reordered them for this function. And then we have now, current time. Collapse, and then I think there's a couple more. Connect to servers. Attempt to establish a WebSocket connection to any ser Realm server that is running has their private port bound and is not currently connected to us. 
Okay, host configuration process is uh, had that up here. This one. Timekeeper. Actually, timekeeper documented here. HTTP client and delete this one. Okay, this actually I had that documented. There, where? There. This is used to connect to own servers. All right. Collapse ping. Okay. Send a ping message uh, to to all Realm servers regularly, and stop any servers that fail to respond promptly. Okay, we just have host configuration and timekeeper here. Elapse setup. Okay. I think that's mm, set up and tear down with the last ones. And this has a return value. This, runs, this holds all the state the service has while running, and that's it. And it's both in and out. Okay, and it returns something. This is uh, not what it does. Thanks for following, QWERTY, with the zero in the middle. All right, so set up the service run state in preparation. The preparation, well, that's all we need to say, right? How about let, actually, let's say set up the service in preparation for running. Okay, return. An indication of whether or not the service was successfully prepared for running is returned. All oh, right, and we have a corresponding. Um, that's weird. It didn't. It doesn't know how to collapse that correctly because that if def. There's a shutdown here. All right, that describes this. There's no return. And um, clean up the service state after it has finished running. Or now that it has finished running. OK, and then there's run. Cool. I think we're done. I just build it, make sure it doesn't break, didn't break, and then I'll wrap things up. So W stay, W serve the cluster. It runs. The cluster works. Actually, let's exercise it a little bit. Let me kill. Or let me stop the leader. So leader's fifty-one seventy-two. So stop the leader. New leader. Okay, new new leader selected. It's server 12 is the leader. And the orchestrator eventually uh, launches it, relaunches 10 again. That's good. So let's kill a follower. So let's kill 11, which is 10, 700. So leadership change did not occur. And it, it detected that it was dead. It la relaunched it. And we're good. Another test I could do... Uh, we don't need this anymore. In another window, I could go to that um, the staging directory and um, go to an individual server and just run it. So that's a kind of all instance zero and just run it. And then when this runs, 
it won't launch 10. It'll say it appears to be server 10, that process, right? And not only that, but this now is continues to run and we're actually seeing all of its diagnostics that we don't normally see because they're, we don't want all that spam. But now when I close that, it should, it should have adopted that one and it kills it correctly. Cool. It all works like it should. So this com this commit is all documentation. Actually, no, uh, we'd staged this and hadn't committed it yet. So let's all stage it together. So we'll say orchestrator refactoring. So extract methods and document the the various parts of the service run procedure. Good enough for now. All right, so that, that's gonna be it for today. So today I was basically setting up the groundwork for configuration. I don't, I have to check after the stream to see if there are no more prerequisites. I would like to get to re live reconfiguration. So that would entail that, let's say I'm running the server cluster here. That would entail that I go from uh, the web client, connect into any one of the servers and say, hey, let's have five servers now. And the server cluster says, okay, we'll arrange that. And it should, there's a bunch of message passing that goes for, for back and forth, but ultimately this orchestrator will be told, hey, we, we need five servers now. It should start the other two. They should join the cluster. Cluster should change from three, a configuration from three to five. So I, that's gonna be quite a lot of steps and I wanna get all the prerequisites out of the way. So that's what I've been trying to work on today. So in the uh, consensus algorithm, we needed a place to store the raft specific state commands, which we need for the that that exchange of uh, configuration, and then I needed the orchestrator to be able to connect to every server, not just the ones that are running on the same host, but every server. And then this is probably what I'll get into when I'm ready for live reconfiguration. The leader of the cluster is going to be telling all orchestrators about configuration changes, and that'll kick off the servers being new servers started, old servers stopped, and all that good stuff. So don't know if I'll be streaming t this tomorrow or, or maybe not until Wednesday, but if there's nothing else gating it, I'll probably go for it, the live reconfiguration. And um, there's, I had this section here, live server reconfiguration that talks about the process. So there's many steps here. It's gonna take more than one stream, but hopefully when it's done, we'll have a cluster that can be reconfigured live. That should be awesome. I'm gonna use that also to, um, take down servers to update their code and uh, maybe even try to automate that. You can imagine if there's like five servers and you want to upgrade the version, you'd have to do this five times where you take down one server, update it, start it up again, and then go to the next server, take it down, update it, start it again. And it's basically this procedure, but repeated five times, right? So anyway, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday, I don't know yet, but Next time I'll be streaming, I'll send out an announcement on my Discord. So if you uh, would like, there's a link to that. And I'll send out an announcement like a little bit before I stream next. So it's either tomorrow morning or Wednesday. I scheduled, I try to stick to 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific. And that's about it. I'm going to go see who I can host right now and pass the baton to someone else. Hope you enjoyed today, and I hope you guys have an awesome new year. Okay, I think we'll, I think we'll, hmm, the tough one. I was going to host Mike, but I hosted Mike very recently ago. Hello, Frost Ice Cold. Can I show you the build system? Actually, I have a, I have a great video. I can't. Really, um, I don't have enough time right now to cover the, 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 the game server's build system, but I made a nice video. It's about half an hour long. It covers both the build system and the test framework I use. So if you don't mind uh, checking that out, that should explain in a very simple example exactly what I use and what tools I use. So let me know um, on the Discord or not if that, if that wasn't good enough, or I guess I'll talk to you next time. I can answer any questions you have. So I was going to host Mike, but I hosted him very, like, not too long ago. Maybe we'll host um, Siege Games instead. Let me just get a link here.
someone goes to host siege games he is the one behind uh the game uh Korea. yeah but right now he's working on his final fantasy 11 private server dev so we'll we'll go we'll go say hi to him so hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you next time bye bye